Hello, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street. My name's Debbie Shaw. Are we ready for a little bit of Sunday sewing? We've got lots of fabrics, we've got books, we've got special offers coming up in the next couple of shows because we're live here until 11 o'clock this morning. Um, we also have some brand new applique from Alison Marion. Uh, this is shadow applique, which is something that I'd certainly never seen before. So hopefully it's new and exciting for you as well. And she's put together some kits. So that's going to come up at um, is that nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. Can't remember, nine o'clock. Um, and then at 10 o'clock, o'clock we have an embroidery machine from Elna for you as well so we've got rather a diverse selection of different sewing techniques for you this morning so we're sewing street we're live for three hours every single day you can take a look at everything that we have not just on those three live hours but available for you on our website which is sewingstreet.com you can order anything you like that way as well or you can order on our phone lines which is 0800 001 4433 our postage is £3.95 all day Day. so it doesn't matter whether you order anything now you go through to checkout and you come back later on in the day you won't be charged any extra because the orders are all processed at midnight tonight so anything that you order we kind of all build up and, and accumulate that uh, postage so you only pay one so you've got a great deal there as well and talking of great deals at eight o'clock every morning we bring you an early bird special which is a special offer for those of you that are up at the crack of dawn well eight o'clock's not really the crack of dawn is it more like four o'clock is the crack of dawn Tell me about it. Um, but we bring you a special offer. So, so for those of you that are nice and early, we have put together three books for the price of two. These are Love to Sew books by Search Press. So they are very simple to understand books with easy to follow projects. They're great books for a beginner or for those of you that have lost your mojo and you're looking for a little bit of inspiration. So we have vintage sagas for the home, Legom style accessories and hanging hearts. So you buy those two and we're going to give you that one. It's a three for two. So let's have a look at what you're not paying for. It could be any one of them that are free, not just this one. Oh, if you want to get in touch, by the way, have my phone open. Dawn, love your cushions. Um, go to our Facebook page. Um, we've got two Facebook pages. One is a group, which is Sewing Street fans. I'm not there. I'm on the Sewing Street one on visitor posts. I am a fan. I'm just not there at the moment. I can only have one page open at a time. So I'm on Sewing Street TV. If you go to visitor posts, let me know what you're up to this morning. Um, what if you've been sewing, if you just want to say hello, are you on your own, a little bit bored, come and have a chat, we don't mind. So that's, uh, that's on our Facebook page. So, vintage style gifts for the home. I think the vintage style um, relates to, so I'm just moving my liberty out the way, relates to the fabrics that have been used. So you imagine if you're making any one of these projects with um, a spot, a stripe, a floral, something that's a little bit more contemporary, you'd have a very different look. But I do like this kind of vintage charm. It is charming, isn't it? It looks beautiful, it's pretty, it's summery, it's uplifting. These are fabric, they're amazing. So we've got little bits of bunting, and you can see what I mean about these being suitable for beginner sewers, or for those of us, maybe you've got, you've got a long project on the go at the moment. Um, oh, make sure you've got a button sewing on facility on your sewing machine for that one. Um, you're quilting maybe, and you just want a smaller project to do in between times. These are quite fun as well. I think it's quite nice if you are a beginner sewer to make something that is useful something that you're going to actually use and enjoy. Shame to stick pins in it, isn't it? Nice ornament, you could use that for, to uh, display your jewellery as well. Um, yeah, something that you can use, something that you can give away. Little gifts, you know, these days when we're not seeing each other in person, if you've got birthdays coming along, and you're not going to get the hugs, but you could send a lovely gift instead. Um, so that is your first book, which is your vintage style gifts for the home. Then we have Legom style accessories. And this one, this is Debbie von Grabler Crozier. She's written quite a few books. And Legom style. This is all about, in fact, there's the history of Legom in here as well. So it's, um, it's a Scandinavian lifestyle kind of thing, to be honest. So essential stitches for you, very clearly explained. There's your basic techniques. And then again, you've got your simple projects there as well. So, was that chocolate? Oh, 
<laughs> I hadn't even noticed it. See, I'm looking at this thinking, what, what a lovely design. And Hannah, who's producing, is saying, oh, lovely hot chocolate with marshmallows and a stick of cinnamon in there. <laughs> so different types of quilting techniques, a little bit of hand sewing in here as well. I mean, what, what a lovely idea, isn't it? That's a way to use up your logs. a bit of bunting but oh, this is pretty as well um, but techniques that you can use in other projects so you're getting the templates in here so if you wanted a bird template to put on I don't know an apron pocket or things like that there's the tote bag you don't have to have the tree design on it so you can take elements of what you're um, what you're learning here and then <laughs> and then use them for different techniques as well so that one is your legom style accessories and then finally we've got hanging arts. So who would have thought that there are so many different ways to create hanging hearts? And of course you can put things like lavender inside them and hang them over your bed head um, or a little bit of potpourri or maybe on the, the wadding that you're putting inside you could add a little bit of essential oil. So lovely in a guest room if you're ever allowed guests back again. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna. If you start start working on your um, on your guest room now, it's gonna be amazing by the time we can have visitors again. Um, but it could be birthday bunting. Um, the heart wreath's really pretty. Hearts of felt. That'd be heartfelt then. I love this kind of idea as well. So um, if you print um, photographs onto fabric and use those, so that could maybe be a pet or somebody that you know. Little sweet look. So again, you're getting all three of those for your fifteen pounds and ninety-eight. So you're actually saving. Is it seven pounds ninety-nine? Well, we have the stock. So these will stay at this price while we have them, or until the end of the day today. So get in there really early if you want those. Um, I've had a message. Now this has come through on the fans page. So. It's taken a while. Um, this is Becky who says, I started sewing again properly as a result of inheriting my grandma-in-law's stash. She was in the Land Army and was a tailoress. Every time I put my foot on the pedal or use her beloved fabrics, I remember her. I don't know what I will do when it's all gone. Has anyone any suggestions for Land Army teddies or what to sew to remember? So have a look on the Sewn Street fans page and, um, and if you can think of anything send Becky a reply. Right, I'm going back onto Sewing Street again, just so I know you're there. Oh, I don't want videos. I want posts. Juliet sent a message as well. Um, she says, morning, Debbie. She's looking forward to all the other programmes this morning. Love, Jules. Thank you very much, Jules. Um, Julie's messaged on Facebook as well. Morning, Debbie. I'm in the middle of making the beach bag from your brilliant bag book. I've mixed two bags together and hopefully we'll be able to use it this year. Oh, I hope so. Well, thank you, Jill. I can't wait to see that one. Post a picture when you've made it. A mashup of bags from So Brilliant. OK, so that's your early bird. You, you, may have, you may have noticed just sneaking in here a little bit of a quilting book thing going on with, with, my, with my fizzog on the front. Um, we're launching my new book tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. They're all signed. They will be all signed. Half of them are signed already. It's been a very early start this morning. Um, but yeah, we're actually launching tomorrow, so um, so have have a look um, at the show tomorrow or or on the website now. I didn't say that. It's la launches launches tomorrow. Launches tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Just don't want you to miss out. This is one of my bags that was um, published, uh, I don't know, that was a year before last now, that's gone quickly. Um, and it's Builder Bag Tote Bags. The Builder Bag books, there are four in the range. We've only got three of them in stock at the moment. And this is the difference with them. It actually comes with two templates, this one. Um, so there aren't any patterns, there's nothing to download. Um, you don't have to cut anything out, enlarge by 200%. These are plastic templates that you simply uh, pop over the top of your fabric and draw around them. And you can create from the two templates that you have in here, 15 bags. I'm going to make a little one um, later on. But you can create 15 bags, but you can 
I'm sure, make more of those as well. So I'll show you the two, you do get two. And there we go. And they're just sort of like boxes, but honestly, you can create so many different bags of different sizes with this one as well. Um, this is a, a hole which is a perfect size for a zip. And there are some of the bags that use two fabrics, like the one here. So that goes over the seam there. So everything's taken into account. Um, they're easy for a beginner. Lots of different styles and lots of different techniques that you can mix and match with uh, again. So this is how you use the template. I'll take you through that later on. And here's a, a few ideas as to what you can make with it. So I'll take you through the tools that you're going to need and techniques like putting in zips and adding piping. Um, if you're going to add a zip pocket, I haven't put a zip pocket in every single bag because that would just take up too many pages. So I'll show you how to put a zip pocket in and then you can fit it into any bag that you like. And these are the projects. So there are quite small, you can make makeup bags, there are quite large ones. There's quilting techniques, adding bias binding, adding piping. Um, these are the templates. So I've I've kind of highlighted the areas of each one of the templates that you're going to need to use to make that bag. This is the easiest one to make and um, it's written down there as well exactly what you're going to need to draw. Um, so some of these are two-dimensional like this one which is a bit more of a folder, kind of an organiser. Different styles of flaps and you've got different sizes of bases as well. So some of them are quite square and some of them are quite slim. So there's a bit of patchwork there. That one's got piping just around here, so that's, I think that's rather nice. Patch pocket on the front. I'll show you how to make this zip section as well, which you can put into any one of the bags. So that's the little one. That's what we're going to be making, just a really simple little gift idea. Easy, easy to post, um, but we're going to use Liberty Fabrics. This one folds away, so the whole bag folds into that pocket on the front. So that's a nice shopper. I like a bag for life, but I don't like to advertise my local supermarket. There's drawstring bags. So again, lots of different styles. In fact, 15 there in total. The book does come out of the folder, so it doesn't have to stay in there, but that's just somewhere quite nice to slip your templates inside when you're not using them so they don't get lost. So that's £11.99. So you're making a saving of £4 there, normally £15.99. Um, but don't tell the author. They, they tend to get a bit stroppy when, they're, when their books are on sale. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that one later. We also have backpacks. Now the difference with the backpacks and the tote bag as an occasion is at this time you get one big template. So you can make bigger bags. So we've moved on a little bit. The technology in developing a big template you, you wouldn't believe. Backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and, until it eventually came back. As this. The first ones that came through, were they, they looked amazing. They were completely clear. Couldn't see it. It was like putting a piece of glass on top of your fabric. Just couldn't see anything through it. So this one's still see-through, but it's got like a frostiness. And it's bigger. So the biggest backpack you can make um, would actually be twice the size of this. And there are different styles, so you've got drawstring backpacks, um, you've got backpacks with flaps, you've got backpacks uh, with pockets on the front and different ways of, of putting the zip panel in there as well. So have a quick flick through some of the different projects. That's using the, um, the PU that we've got. I don't think we've got grey on the show, but you can use your PUs for these. Some are a little bit fun. That's the mustard colour PU. So again, drawstrings, adjustable straps, some are convertible so you can make them into messenger bags. So 15 different styles again, that's using a laminate, you could use a PU again for that one. The canvas that we've got on the show would be perfect for any of these as well and you're going to need some wadding for them. Um, so H640 we've also got on the show if you wanted to add that to your order. So that one is a backpacks. which should be £17.99. Don't mention that to the author. She stamps her feet and everything. She's such a diva. This one's a Cajun bag. So this one's got two templates. And then... She's so demanding. She has a page turner. She, she has a, a professional page turner to, to, to turn pages as she's signing books. Um, I'm auditioning this morning because my page turner is uh, furloughed. 
So, any volunteers in the building? Actually, we can't get that close, can we? I've got to do it all by myself. Oh, so nobody can help me. So, this one is occasion backs. So, we've got different styles again. We've got um, round flaps, curved flaps. Some are, oh, come on, £11.99. No. Um, take advantage, honestly. You don't, you, don't find, you don't find those prices so low on newer books, seriously. Um, so some are kind of slim, some have a gusset, some have, well, you can make a makeup bag out of those. Some are fringe, but again, there's different techniques. So that's using patchwork techniques. That's a triple bag. Those have been really popular. I might make one of those one day when I've got enough time. I'll need the whole hour to do that then. Um, and that one is actually using the template upside down. But you can create a different look with that as well. So that one is occasion bags again at eleven pounds ninety-nine. Honestly. And the mini book launches tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. And that's all about beginner quilting. So I'll, uh, we'll, we'll go through some more of that tomorrow. Um, H640 I mentioned, this is something that you're going to need. If you don't have any already, it'd be a jolly good idea to, to get hold of some of this. Um, some of the, the bags are using a Bosal foam. Hopefully we'll be able to get some of that soon. But this is a really good weight of um, interfacing or stabiliser to give your bags a little bit of stability, but without them, you can, it's still soft, so they're still squishy. So they will kind of stand alone, um, but you get a soft look. And it's easy to sew through because it's only about an eighth of an inch maybe a quarter of an inch in thickness, but you don't need to trim it into the seams. You can sew straight over the top. So the knobbly side is glue. Um, this goes onto the back of your fabric, and then from your fabric side, from the top of your fabric, good old blast of steam, as hot as your, hot as iron as your fabric will take. Um, and then that will adhere to the back of your bag. The thing I like about the Valiseline is that on no occasion when I've used it has it puckered. Um, some of them, if you give them steam by mistake, because some of these interfacings don't like steam, and you give them some steam and everything wrinkles up, and it can be a real nightmare to try and peel it back off again and start all over again. So put this on the back of your fabric first of all, and then start in the centre and simply steam out. Don't push it because you're going to twist your fabric, but just a gentle glide with steam all over, and you'll get perfect results every single time, I'm sure. And there's a metre square here, so you, you, get, you get a lot. You'll be able to make quite a few bags out of those. So I'd stock up on that one if I was you while we have the stock, because it just tends to sell out. Right, we are going to make a posh bag, and the reason it's posh is not because it's one of my designs. It's because we're going to use Liberty Fabric. So let's take you through what we have for you. Right, this is the teal mega bundle. So you get all of these fabric. There's a half a metre of each one and there's one half metre free as well. Um, this is £74.90. Just a quick look at what half a metre looks like. I'm sure you know. It's 112 centimetres wide, so just over a metre wide and half a metre in length. Um, so I think with bundles, the majority of your ordering are going to be quilters. But if this is homewares, maybe you're making, I don't know, it could be patchwork cushion covers or something like that. It is available by the half metre, um, but we are very limited in what we have available for you. So have a look on sewingstreet.com for details there. But look at the colours. Isn't that so pretty? Look at the detail. It's like every single square inch has been just covered in... Um, <laughs> Sharpie ink doesn't come off anything, does it? It hasn't been covered in Sharpie. Sorry, I've just got... I just noticed a black dot on my nail. I wondered where it came from. Book signing. Um, so you've got the darker teal, the paler teal, but even right here in the background, you've got these tiny, tiny little dots. So every area is covered with detail. So no matter how small the project is, how tiny the patchwork pieces are, you're just going to see detail everywhere. And as you're looking very closely, look at the quality of the fabric. A good quality of fabric will have very fine threads, but lots of them, so you get a high thread count. And that gives you a smoothness, it gives it a lovely handle, it gives it a beautiful drape. 
Another thing that makes the quality of fabric is the quality of the print, and very fine printing is, is normally quite difficult to do. Look how tiny those dots are. Look at the outline of the leaves and kind of the, the shading and the veins there. Very, very fine. The dots on the flower there, look, those tiny little circles. That's a sign of a quality fabric, which you would expect to find, of course, with Liberty. This is a beautiful one. So we've got a very dark teal with little, that look like daisies and little tiny buds as well. They look like watercolours, don't they? Really deep, rich colour. Now this is Liberty Lawn in Teal, we're calling this one. I don't know, but it's not lawn. It's a quilting weight fabric. They're all quilting weight fabrics, so that it's not, it must, must mean something to do with the lawn outside the house at Winterbourne, like the grass. Not realising that there's a fabric called lawn, which this isn't. So, again, we've got teal in here, but now we're introducing reds. So there's more colours coming in. Look at the gold in the background. That's not foiled. It's not a metallic, um, but it, it has that kind of look. It has the richness, doesn't it? So very delicate, tiny little flowers look. That's so pretty. So a little bit more geometric with this one. So we have um, like leaf shapes that are creating, um, oh, what do they call that? The wedding circle, if that was a, oh, actually, no, no. I'll tell you what that is. Um, <laughs> that, that is a design, not, not that you would, but it would be quite appropriate, um, that you can use your, um, your roundup tool for. So you can actually create that design in patchwork with the roundup tool, which I'm going to show you in the next L. So I don't know what it's called, but it is a patchwork technique. It's orange peel, isn't it? It is orange peel. So again, £74.90 for all of these. This is a lovely one as well. It looks like um, lemon trees. I've got a lemon tree. And it actually produces lemons. It's lovely. I've got it in a pot. Oh, actually, and it's next to my grape vine as well. I've got grape vines. See, I, I, it's because I live at Winterbourne House. Mm, mm, mm. Nose is growing slightly there. <laughs> in my dreams, I would live in Winterbourne. I'd love to live in a stately home. I'd love lots of empty rooms I can rattle around it. Well, I wouldn't. I'd fill them up with fabric. I could have a sewing room A, sewing room B, the sewing room in the west wing and the sewing room in the east wing. And then maybe some, some kind of conveyor belt that goes between all of them. And then, of course, there's the staff. I'd, I'd have a page turner room. If I, if I was rich and I had sewing staff, I think the only, the only one I'd like to employ to take the work away from me is the one that irons. One thing I don't like doing. I don't mind pressing. You know, if you're pressing seams open and that kind of thing, quite enjoy that. It's part of the project. But when you first get your fabric home and it's all creasing, you would iron it. That's... I, don't, I, I don't think ironing's fun. This is a lovely deep colour as well, isn't it? So teal in, uh, the paler teal in the background and then the darker with, with all of the flowers. I'm sure there's another design. It is, it's the same as that one. But you kind of have to look closely to see the difference. Or, or to see that they're the same. There's not very much different. No. Then we have poppies. Oh, I bought some poppies. Our garden centre's open. Or queued up for ages. Spend a fortune because it's like going. It's like when you go to the checkout and the sweets there, and, and as you're standing there, you think, oh, I love one of those. I love one of those. I'm a magazine. Um, and it was like this at the garden centre. We weren't allowed in, but they kind of they had the queue going all the way through the different beds. So we went there with a big trolley. Me and Kim just said, well, I have one of those. We'll have one of those. But I bought a huge poppy. It's about that big. It's dead now. Well, it, I, I don't know if it's dead. All the petals fell off it when I planted it. Um, but it was it was beautiful while it lasted. Hopefully. That's what happens, and I'll have some more flowers, but I love poppies. It's a massive one. But doesn't it look, it looks lovely in green. 
you remember, um, was it a couple of years ago for Remembrance Day, um, an artist created ceramic poppies and they surrounded the whole of the Tower of London with them. It's just amazing um, sea of red. My sister bought one of those. They sold them all. And they're, they're, they're lovely. That, that was like the poppy that I bought. That's what it reminded me of. Only she still got hers and mine died. If you know anything about poppies, let me know, because I'd love it to grow again. And do the leaves look okay? It's just the flower. They've only got one flower on it, but just all the... That, it looks a little bit like that, but huge. And that's your fine. We got there. This is the final one in the whole bundle. Remember, you're getting one for free. Um, £74.90 brings you five and a half metres of Liberty Fabrics in total. And then we've got another bundle. Remember, have a look um, on the website if you wanted to see the, the ones that we have available in half metres. I hope this one is. I think this, um, for a blouse or a summer dress, would be really pretty. I'd, I love this kind of print. I would quite happily wear this all through the summer. Um, yeah, maybe even a smart shirt style of blouse would look lovely with that one. I just think it's really elegant. And I love greys with a little bit of colour in there as well. And again, it looks like watercolour, doesn't it? Then we have, now this one looks like stencils or stamps. Really pretty, tiny little ditzy flowers on there again. Morning dawn. She says, another perfect start to a beautiful Sunday. Thank you. Um, oh, and hi, Jen. If using faux leather or PU, which side would you iron the fusible fleece to? You've got to well, you've got to iron it to the back, um, but don't iron on the top of your PU. I did do this in one of the shows, actually, the other day. Excuse me. not going to do it now, but I can explain. I'll, so I'll finish that in a minute. We do this, don't we? We go off at a tangent. Um, never iron from the top. This is like a plastic while well, it's a PU so it will melt on your iron but it will take heat so when you get it home you can give it a blast of steam to get the creases out when you use your fusible fleece on the back of there um, iron it on the fusible fleece side but be aware that fleece is polyester so if you hold your iron on there too long it's going to melt it so uh, I wouldn't use a very hot iron I'd use a medium heat and just go up and down like that with the iron just touch it and you can give it a blast of steam as well, but just touch it. If you're a little bit nervous about doing that, test on a spare piece first of all. And if you're still a bit nervous about putting heat anywhere near it, even though your fusible fleece is fusible, use some 505 spray instead. So don't use any heat with it at all. Um, if you want this, by the way, it is coming up in a bit, um, but the mustard is always really popular. Mustard tends to be the one that sells out first. £6.99 for half a metre, and that's 140 in width, so it's, it's wide, and it's dressmaking quality as well. Back to Liberty. So, again, you're getting five and a half metres with a half a metre free. See, that's that same design that you saw in the teal collection, but it looks, looks like midnight. It looks like, oh, you're looking out through the forest. It looks quite whimsical and magical, doesn't it? But again, very different with the different colours. And then the poppies, poppies this time in pink. Pinks and greys, so pretty, love poppies. Um, and then the one that I said looked like an orange tree or a lemon tree. It's a plum tree now, look, we've got, uh, we've got green on there. Um, so again, you've got the same prints as on the teal but very different. So you could go for the both together. That's the little tiny flowers, like a star shape, isn't it? Very pretty. There's your orange peels. The florals that I thought looked watercoloured. We've got ditzy flowers. And then finally, more poppies. So five and a half metres there for £74.90. If you'd like to order, to order, if you'd like to order, you can order on the website on sewingstreet.com um, or you can order on the phone lines, which is a UK-based phone number, which is 0800 001 4433. Right. I'm trying to think which fabric. Should we make a bag? Should we do a bit of sewing? OK. So this is tote bags. Now, any particular fabric do you think 
Shall we go? Want to, should we do my favourite one? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this one because I can. And then I want a really contrast or a plainer one. That that'll do me. So I'm going to go for the orange peel one for a lining. So I need that. That open this up. I'll use some fusible fleece. So let me just plug my iron in ready. I could have been more organised, you know. And I will need a sewing machine. So I think I'll go for this one because that's the one that I've been given. And this is the 550, which does come with, it comes with a plug and a foot pedal and everything. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So I'm going to turn my fabric to the wrong side. And it's not going to take very much because I'm just going to do the little, um, oh, there we go, like a cosmetic bag, it's this one. Um, so there's my template. I'm only using one. You do get two templates. And I just need this area here, which is in the middle there, there, those are the corners, round there, round there, round there. There's also a pocket flap, so you can make a, just that bit on its own. Or that section on its own could be, that's easy to see, isn't it? Um, could be a flap pocket on the front of, um, of one of your bags. So again, it's really versatile. So I'll need two of the outer fabric, two of the lining, and then the outer fabric will need some fusible fleece, some H640, and I'll need a zip as well. Oh, actually, will my zip go? I've only, got, I've only had one zip with me this morning. There we go, purple, purple will be fine. H640, jobs are good in. So I folded my fabric in half, and then we'll just need to draw around it. So, like, like that. So, da, da, da. so I'll need to sew in the lines here. I'm using a, um, an air erasable pen. Doesn't really matter because this is going to be in the seam allowance around the corner. The ink will wipe off um, the template as well. If you're using any kind of ink that seems to stay, then try, try some methylated spirits really brings them up a treat. So there is my outline. And then we'll just cut that out. If you wanted to use rotary cutter, that's fine. But if you don't have one, don't worry about it. If, if you do a lot of sewing, whether it's bag making, dress making, curtain making, certainly if you're quilting, treat yourself to a, a rotary cutter ruler and mat. You'll, You'll find them invaluable. I would use um, a smaller rotary cutter when I'm dressmaking as well, because you don't need to lift the pattern up with, like, like you would do with scissors. So if you want a really accurate cut, you have to practice a little bit first. Right, and then cut out the corners. And then we'll need to do the same for the lining. I know that zip is really long, but I do tend to do that. I was thinking if I'm, if I'm buying zip, really long zips don't cost very much more than very short zips. If you've got a very short zip, you have a very short zip. Whereas if you've got a long zip, you can always cut it down to make it into a shorter zip, is my thinking. So that's, that's my mother in my ear saying, you could save yourself some money there, right, Deborah? This is the lining. Now, if you've got a, um, a dark fabric, maybe using black, you could use a chalk pen instead of your air erasable pens. Um, always lose something, don't I? Always lose something right next to me. Oh, morning, June. Here's the bag I made from the Occasions Bag Book. Oh, I love that. I love your fabric choice as well. Now that's the one with the gusset in it, isn't it? And you've, applique, you've fussy cut a couple of L's and applique them to the flap. It's the nice thing about bags, isn't it? You can really personalise them. If you want more pockets, if you want less pockets, 
And I don't know anybody that doesn't own bags of some description, even if you're just going to use them for storage. And you can never have enough, can you? And little bags like this. So I'm thinking gifts. Something that you could maybe put some treats in and it's not too expensive to send in the post. So, and it's quick to make as well. So if you've got a few of them, actually, if you do want to make a few and sell them, do go ahead, don't mind at all. Don't sell the patterns. I, mean, I don't really draw enough patterns and selling those. I would be a little miffed. But if you want to make anything and sell it for yourself, for charity, whatever you like, don't mind at all. It will say in the book, as it will say in all books, that you're not allowed to make anything to sell without the permission of the publisher. But what the publisher is going to do is to ask the author and the author will say yay or nay. So I'm just kind of cutting out the middleman there and saying, saying yay. Right, just get my ironing mat. And we'll put some fleece on the back of this. And again, not, not actually using very much fabric at all. So a nice little scrap buster kind of thing, this one. But imagine, I mean, this is Liberty Fabric. How much would you pay for a makeup bag from Liberty? I wouldn't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even look at one, to be honest. Then, then I'd have my mother shouting in my ear, ah, Deborah, you could make that. So, quick blast. I'm just doing that to secure it and then cut it out and then we'll go right up to the edge. It's a bit hot. I must have never burnt myself on fabric before, though. <laughs> it's a nasty burn. Yeah, I was sewing. There we go. And those cut-out corners will make the bottom of it square, so it'll have a little bit of depth. Perfect. And then the same with the second half. With your... Um, H640 as well. I've got a rip in that one, but I'm going to go over it. You can join it together just like you would do wadding if you were quilting. So put two pieces up together and put a zigzag stitch down the edge. Or you can actually buy tape that joins wadding together, so you can do the same thing with that as well. So even the, the smaller pieces like this, don't throw those away because they're not big enough. Just join them together. There we go. In there, and there, and there. You could put a piece of applique on the front of it, maybe an initial if, you make, if you're making it for somebody specifically. But a nice handy place to keep things like bobbins and notions and spare threads and smaller items like that in your, in your stash. Or you could make little kits, couldn't you? Maybe an English paper piecing kit would be nice or a little plique kit. Just going to iron the lining while I'm there as well. Then we're going to put the zip in. Now there are different ways of putting zips in the top. If it was a bigger bag, I'd put little tabs either end of the zip. But this zip is going to go straight into the side seams. So I can cut it down a little bit, it's rather long. So take your outer pieces. I'll do these one at a time. And we're going to sew these. I've got pink thread, but that's fine. I've got a zipper foot. No, nope, not going to use a zipper foot. Use a zipper foot normally. Um, but have a try, because a lot of machines like this one. If I, if you're on a straight stitch, a straight stitch, a straight, a straight stitch doesn't have a width. So if you use the width adjustment button it'll swing the needle from left to right. So I'm not actually going over the coil of the zip with my teeth, uh, sorry, <laughs> or with my foot, so if you <laughs> or any other body part. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking zip towards it teeth. I'm not, go <laughs> I'm not going over the zip coil with the foot of my sewing machine. I'm butting it up against the edge, and then I'm moving the needle right over. So I've got the same effect as if I'd put the zipper foot on there. And so now I'm going to lengthen the stitch to 2.6 on this one. 
Um, not because I need the stitch to be longer, but when you're sewing through the fleece, um, it tends to drag a little bit, so it slows down the speed of your machine. It's friction. So that's face down on that side. So I'll need to put a lining piece on the opposite side, like so. Now this time, I can't see where I'm sewing from the lining side, but I can from this side. So I want to sew over the same line or slightly towards the zip coil, line up the edges of the bag like so. And so. So I've just moved my foot pedal. The foot pedal is, I think it's in the next village. <laughs> Can't quite reach that far. <laughs> I'm very flexible, but I can't do the splits. OK, so that's that one. So now we have this. And then we need to put the other two pieces on the opposite side. With this method, you're not going to top stitch down here. You could do that afterwards if you wanted to. Um, so right sides together, opposite side of the zip, line up these edges. This is, for a beginner, this is so easy and because you've got the template there, you know, you've got the perfect size and the perfect size of um, cut out corners to make the base and everything. Um, but scale it up. Obviously, you won't have a pattern for a larger one or a template, but there's no reason why you couldn't add a few inches. So that's now the outside. So we need to put the second side of the lining on. So lay that down, right sides together over the zip. And again, I'm sewing from this side, along the same stitch or just inside. Like so. Like that. Right. Now you can press that and don't worry about pressing over zips. I would try and avoid the coil because it is nylon, but don't worry, I've never had one melt on me. Um, scissors. Let me chop these off because I don't like loose threads everywhere. Even though you're not going to see them. So that's the lining side. We're going to whip this off here. Before you cut this side off, make sure you don't cut the slider off. And then, when I'm sewing this together, this is going to part. So I'm just going to put a few stitches over the end. You can do that by hand, or you can do it on the machine. I want the needle to go back to the centre, so the quickest way to do that is to switch the machine off and on again, and it'll whiz back through to its default. And then we'll put the open end of the zip just underneath. And carefully sew. That will do. So I've just held the edge together. Right, now we're going to sew uh, with this end of the slider, don't go off that way either. Because now we have no stoppers on. That slider could be let loose. Don't free the slider. So that goes there. And you can come off there. And that goes there. So the wrong sides and the right sides are the right sides together, so printed sides together. And we're going to sew all the way around, apart from the cutout pieces, and we're going to leave a gap in the bottom here so we can turn it the right side out. Make sure the zip's open. There, you can fiddle around with it if you forget, um, but you may as well leave it open while you think about it. Now, because at the edge here, you've got like an H shape, it's three-dimensional. When you come up to the zip, you're going to push it towards the lining. And that'll make it poke into the lining side, otherwise you're going to have a lump on the outside. Like that. So, just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So again, up to the zip, just slow down a bit when you get there, the same as you would do with any kind of thick fabric, because you've got quite, quite a thickness. And there you go. 
and straight the way down to the end. And that snips off. And then I'll do the same on, on the other side before I sew the bottom, because this is the important bit, just lining that zip up. So those are the size I like to sew first. I'm not worried about back tacking or reverse stitching at the ends of these seams because those corners are going to be inside another seam, if you were wondering. And I'm not fussed about finishing seams on a bag like this either. Unlikely it's going to go in the wash. If you're making something that is going to be laundered, then I would, um, the easiest way is just use pinking shears um, and just trim the edges of the, um, of the seams. But if it's not going to go in the wash, I wouldn't bother. Nobody's going to see on the inside once it's finished because it's a fully lined little bag. I don't like a raw edge. I don't like to see a raw edge. I like a tidy edge. I will reverse here though because that's where I'm going to leave my gap. So I'll just swish along there a bit. And that's that done. Morning, Sharon. Oh, Sharon's been bag making, that's nice. Um, used the tote book for inspiration for a bag and did the strips in the opposite way. So did I do mine downwards then? That's lovely. And she's embroidered as well. You'll never walk alone. How lovely. <gasps> Got an embroidery machine coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. So now we're going to pull out the two sides of the bag. So we have the bottom seam sitting over the top of the side seam. And then we're going to sew across here, and that's what makes the base square. So this time I will reverse back a couple of stitches. I will re-thread the machine. Sometimes with machines, if you start sewing off the edge of your fabric, it just doesn't like it. Machines don't like to sew nothing. So if you start a few stitches off the edge, it's going to complain in some way or, or other. My machine at home complains by throwing the thread out of the take-up lever. This one obviously thinks, I'm going to unthread your needle then. I don't know why I'm doing that, because we've got a needle threader. There we go. They have personalities, don't they, sewing machines? They have their little idiosyncrasies. Again, a few stitches back there. And we'll do the same on all four corners. So with both of the corners of the outer bag, squish in opposite directions, and then both the corners of the lining. A turning gap. So if you are, you know, if you're making things to sell or if you've got a few gifts that you want to make, I mean, that's a nice Christmas fabric. Um, have a think about, you know, Christmas gift ideas. I tell you what, if we ever get back to normal before Christmas, the last thing you're going to want to do is sit inside sewing, isn't it? So get it all done now while you don't have a choice. So have a think about Christmas. Um, and what you could put in here, if you have anybody in your family that's a sewer, then you could start just collecting a few notions, you know, a bag of zips and threads. You can never, never be without, or you can never have enough. And it may seem a bit silly for anybody that doesn't sew things, a bag of zips. I'd love a bag of zips. A bag of threads. I'd love a bag of bobbins. <laughs> right, now we're going to turn this the right side out, which is why we had the gap left in the bottom. There we go. Like so. Let's push out the, the corners. Like so. Push out that bit. Then we have a hole in the bottom of the lining, which you could sew by hand with a ladder stitch if you were Jenny Harris, who's very particular about her gaps. But I'm going to sew this on my sewing machine like that. Like so. And then we'll push this inside the back. No, that's sweet. 
needs a press. This is what I meant about the zips being pushed downwards, so the zip ends kind of disappear into the lining. And there you've got a nice little bag. So if that if that were us in the Liberty store, I'd maybe put a ribbon like I did in the book, put a little ribbon through the end of there as a, a nice little finishing touch. But I think if I went into a Liberty store and I thought, you know, I just want, want somewhere to keep my lip here, or want a little makeup bag, or a little spare purse, or somewhere to keep my notions, but I want, to, I want a Liberty print and I want Liberty lining, I've got no idea, but I don't think you're talking the probably pennies that that actually costs you. Um, and of course you can make as many of those as you like. Any size that you like. So £11.99, that's your tote bags book, and that's the book that it came from. So if you're making any of the tote bags, then why not make yourself a little purse to go with it? Um, you could add a ribbon loop and make a wristlet, so it could be a nice little evening bag as well. I think that's... From start to finish, you know, cutting out, no prep done whatsoever, don't tell my boss, um, then that's probably going to take you about half an hour. That's cute. Pleased with that. Um, right, the fabric, let me just pop these back in here. Go on in. Got to be neat and do it properly, haven't you? There we go. Let's give you a reminder of the pink bundle, which is where this fabric came from. So I used that and a bit of the lining. You will get complete pieces. Uh, we do have um, by the half metre for some of these on the website. But they're dwindling. I really ought to fold that so you don't see that. So that's the first one that I was using for the outside of the bag, which is my favourite one out of all of them. I just think it is so elegant. We have got a few of these available on their own, so by the half metre, um, but we've got less than 10 metres of that remaining. So if you do want to do a bit of dressmaking with it, then I, sh I should order, order sooner rather than later, just to make sure you get hold of yours. And this is the one that I used for the lining. So really deep, kind of a... Um, proper navy blue, that one, I think. Again, all of these, you're also going to receive, in effect, one absolutely free. So there's five and a half metres, but you're only paying for five. Love the poppy one. And then the trees. And the stylized flowers on those. A little bit like passion flowers, I think. And then you've got the small ditzy print. The tiny watercolour type flowers. More flowers, a bit pansy-esque those, methinks. And then a smaller poppy design. All for £74.90. So you're getting half, half a metre of Liberty fabric for free. You don't hear that very often, do you? <laughs> Um, if you would like to order, if you're new to us, welcome along this morning. You can have a look on our website, which is sewingstreet.com. As you go to Sewing Street, it'll come up Jewellery Maker, and you'll think, hang on a minute, what am I doing there? I don't want jewellery. But you can see a sewing machine in front of you. We're actually sharing uh, with our sister channel for the time being. So you can watch the show live there. So that if you've got any mates that are saying, I can't get Channel 74, tell them to go online and you can watch it live there. Um, and then underneath are all of the products that we have for you in these three live shows that we have this morning. So if we go onto page two, let me just click on that and scroll down a little bit. There we go. Um, we've got bundles, look. So those are the bundles that we've just been through. But if you wanted to order any of those fabrics by the half metre, you'll see those directly underneath. They're not all there now because a lot of those are actually selling out. So there's your pink bundle and then those are all of the pieces that we have available by the meter, which means that if you ordered two, they come joined up. If you wanted to order a, a, a 10 meter piece, then order 20. Uh, we also have, we saw the, our PU, which is another one of my favorite fabrics. Uh, 
which are these. So I'm going to show you the mustard first of all while we've got the stock. I love this because you're getting loads for a start. So your half metre is 140 wide, so it's dressmaking width, but it's also a dressmaking quality. It has a little bit of stretch to it. So the back of this is actually knitted, um, which makes it comfortable. So if you're making skirts, if you're making trousers, I wouldn't in the hot weather. It is PU, after all. It's not a breathable fabric. Um, but jackets and things like that, you can make out of this. Look at the softness. And when you get it home, you will feel the softness. It is the most amazing fabric. It's like a dream fabric to work with. It's not like an oil cloth that is very, very stiff. It's not overly shiny. It's just got a lovely, elegant sheen, but it has a lovely drape. If you're making homewares, I've made cushion covers. I've smocked cushion covers out of this before now. If you're covering chairs, Absolutely perfect, easy to work with, don't need anything special on your sewing machine. Although if you're top stitching, you may need a walking foot or a non-slip foot. If you're making something like this, there's no top stitching involved. So you don't need a special foot if you're going to make a bag, unless you're sewing from the top. So normally you sew from right sides together like so, so you've got the knitted side on both sides, so no special foot. But if at any point you're going to sew from this side, will need special foot. Don't need special needles, so you don't need a leather needle or anything like that. Um, but you can gather it, you can pinch it, you can pleat it, you can wash it. So 30 degree washer or cool wash will be fine. You can iron it. So when you get it home, it'll be folded up into squares and it'll be creased like this. So always from the back, Give it a good old blast of steam. You can smooth over it with the iron. If it does go baggy, so if you made a jacket and you've got bagging on the sleeves, give it a blast of steam from the inside and you'll find it shrinks back again. I would use my Clover Wonder Clips instead of pinning because pinning will leave holes. You can pin in the seam allowance, um, just like you would do on and any kind of laminate or silks or anything like that, so you don't see the holes. Um, but if you do get holes in here, if you need to unpick some stitches or something like that, again, give it a blast of steam from the back and you'll find that the hole starts to close up again, so it melds back together again. So it's, it's just a beautiful fabric to work with and it gives you a really expensive look to whatever it is that you're making, whether it's bags or clothing or homewares. Imagine a pair of curtains made out of that. So we have the mustard. It's £6.99 for half a metre, which is fantastic value for money. Always the colour that you go for first. Why not mix a couple together? Why not go for the mustard and the chocolate? And that would go really well. We have the taupe. And this is, this is an elegant colour, isn't it? And it's very much kind of one of the colours of the season at the moment. Goes nicely with the chocolate brown. Again, that's £6.99. Red... Uh, laminates can be a bit dodgy because a lot of the time they're really shiny and I don't like that shiny look. I think it can look a bit cheap. Um, but this has a soft sheen. It doesn't have that real high shine that reds can have. It's got, um, with any of them, when you get it home and you look really closely, it does kind of have a vein, there's a, a texture to it. So it has a very authentic leather kind of look if that's what you're going for. So that's your red. And then that deep rich brown. It's just so, so tactile. It's so very, very soft. And so only £6.99. We have a navy. That looks nice with the red, actually. You could create a nautical kind of look with that one. And then finally, we have the black. And try mixing them with different types of fabric as well, different weights of fabric. This is the black. We used it to make the handles as well. A um, little bit of a tip. I mean, that is top stitching, so you need a proper foot. Um, but when you're folding like this, instead of clipping, use some of your either 505 spray or a glue stick to hold the layers together. Don't get it on the outside because it'll stain. Um, but that's easy and it keeps it flatter than if you were um, using clips. So, and, and try different types of fabric. This is um, a cotton, it's quite a thin cotton, but I've got H640 behind it, so it then gives the bag the same kind of, um, the flap the same kind of weight as the rest of the bag. And in fact, on this one, there is H640 behind that as well. FYI. So again, £6.99 is your price there. So those are all of those. We also have a back in stock for you with the black cotton canvas. 
So that would go very nicely with the mustard, or with the red, black and red. Black cotton canvas, another one of my favourite fabrics. Because it's, it's just such a lovely quality. So again, you've got 140 wide, nice width on that. 100% cotton, but it's a heavier weight. So for cushion covers, um, if you're making lightweight jackets, um, pinafore dresses, that kind of weight, I wouldn't make anything frilly and flirty with it um, because it is a little bit heavy. But for lightweight jackets, unlined jackets, summer trousers, um, for homewares, only £3.99 for half a metre is such good value. And again, because it's by the half metre, if you needed more than one, so if you're making a pair of trousers, you may want a couple of metres, then your two metres will come all in one length. So if you order four, you'll get a two metre length. I do have other colours available, so have a look on the website again for those. Love that one. Right, um, we do have, coming up in the next hour, a new technique with Alison Marion, who, you, who you've seen before, who has very kindly done some filming from home. Um, so she's going to take you through a brand new technique for you, which I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So go and put the kettle on, um, and we'll see you again in two, three minutes' time. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm Debbie and I am so excited to be launching my latest book with you exclusively on Sewing Street this Monday morning. This is Sewing Secrets Quilting and it's a techniques-based quilting book which is suitable for beginners. I think you're going to learn a lot. I'll take you through different types of jargon, the quilting techniques and all of the things that you're going to learn from the tutorials in here you can take through to make 10 different projects. So we talk about binding, we talk about straight line quilting, quilting as you go, free motion embroidery and again using all of these techniques to create not necessarily huge quilt, quilts but simple achievable products using really um, professional techniques so you're going to get a professional finish. So join me if you can here on Sewing Street exclusively on Monday morning for my launch. I can't wait to have you company and remember all of these are the kind of things that you can be making when you've learned the techniques from the book. I'll see you on Monday.
Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there and welcome back to Sewing Street. Now in this hour we've got a brand new technique from Alice and Marion. Um, her, I think it's her own invention. Um, and it's an applique technique or shadow applique where you can create something really beautiful and unusual and very, very different. I have to admit, I haven't seen this technique before at all. So if I kind of manoeuvre this around a little bit, can you see the shine here? That's organza. Isn't that amazing? So it's, oh gosh, it looks glittery now, doesn't it? That's so pretty. So you've got your applique behind here, and this is a technique of adding the organza over the top just to give you this really lovely, almost like a frosting over your fabric. This one's called Hello Blossom, and these are kits. Um, if you're ordering on the website, there you are, uh, £26.99, you're going to find these on the third page when you go to Sewing Street. We've got two different options for you, and if I were you, I would go for the both of them. So there's everything that you need in the kit apart from your cushion pad. You're going to need to provide one of those yourself. But isn't that pretty? Isn't it so unusual? And it's such a lovely, calming technique. And it's so nice to do something that's a little bit different. Um, so let me, let me know what you think. Uh, £26.99 is for the kit. And in the kit, you're going to get all of this look. So I shan't take you through everything, but everything that you need. So from your waddings and your bond webs and your cotton fabrics, all of these chosen by Alison. You do get instructions with these as well. Then you're going to get your applique fabrics, so all of these and the greens. And then there is your organza. Um, and I know when I spoke to Alison when she was um, developing these, um, these kits, because um, initially we didn't know whether we were going to be providing the fabrics for it or whether she was going to do them. So this is everything is very, very new. Um, but we decided that um, Alison would source her own fabrics and source her own organza because she's very fussy. I didn't want that. I sent her some samples. No, I didn't want that one. And that one's got too many colours in it. I don't like that one. So, so basically, she sourced everything herself so that you've got exactly the right fabrics, but you've also got the quality of the fabrics there as well. So that's everything you need for this kit. The second one, torn between the two, that's why I think it'd be quite nice to go for the both of them, because although they're very different fabrics, they really complement each other because of the way that they've been made. So again, you can really see the, the sheen on there all instructions are included as well. Beautiful, isn't it? For your £26.99. So I shan't take you through everything all over again, but everything that you need to create the cover. Um, cut almost exactly to size. So everything that you need to be able to create this. Isn't it pretty? So, very thorough. Instructions included. And I think you're going to have such a wonderful time making it as well. That's so pretty. And I see something different, isn't it? Congratulations to Alison. Alison has very kindly um, filmed a video from home because obviously we don't have guests in the studio because we can't keep two metres of art in here because the studio is only two metres big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but <laughs> oh, the new studio that we're going to have. Is that a flying elephant? And I think it's pink as well. It was, yes. And there may be a pie in the sky up there as well. They talk a lot about us having a new studio, but here we are still. Um, and actually, I shall miss this if, if we ever do move, because it is quite nice and Anyhow, that's by the by. Alison couldn't come into the studio to film, but we ha she has very kindly made a video um, from home. So let's take a look at uh, how you make up your cushions. Hi, everyone. My name is Alison Marion. Welcome to my workspace. I'm very lucky because to my left, I have my lovely garden, and to my right, the view is my lovely fabric stash. And in the corner, sat making a few cards, is my mum. Say hi, mum. Hi, 
Hi mum. No. <laughs> Today I'm going to demonstrate the shadow applique cushions. It's a technique that is an applique design overlaid with a sheer or translucent fabric which softens both the shape and the colour. It came to Europe in the 18th century uh, from India I believe and it was it was popular for decorating handkerchiefs, collars, doilies, cushions and, and nice little sachets, things like that. So it's a decorative technique. I can remember having a little collar on a dress of my daughter, not realising that's what it was, but that was a shadow applique and it was on a nice little Peter Pan collar. The kids come complete with everything you need to make the cushion other than your cushion pad and the thread. We'll talk about the thread a little later on. So both both of the kits are pretty much the same. There's a couple of little differences. So you can't, you start off, you've got your fabrics for your applique, whichever one that you want to do. And then we've got your organza layer, which is your top layer that gives you your lovely sheer. 100% cotton. Then a two ounce wadding, it's a polyester wadding, and a cotton voil. The reason this is thin is because I personally like to hand sew round the applique, so the least resistance to your needle the better, so the thinner the backing fabric. It doesn't actually show on the cushion when it's completed, it's just, just holding everything together. So that's your start, that's everything you need. The one thing that's different with the, the daisy, because you've got your different colours on the front, you've got your two pieces and you need to sew those two together. So your seam is then pressed towards the darkest side and then you just treat that as the one piece of fabric. The applique is actually put on your main fabric with fuser web. If you haven't used this before, it's a lovely iron-on transfer fabric to fabric. So what you do is you follow out all your pattern from your instructions and you need to trace around every piece that you're going to need on your design. So we've got the different coloured ones marked out here. So you've got this piece of, and you've got your different colours and you cut them out so that you're leaving a little border all the way around the outside edge. And then you can fuse it to the back of your fabric. Once you've drawn around and cut around your pattern pieces, then you put your bubbly side down onto the back of your fabric. And you're just going to press that. Normally about 10 seconds is enough. You use a dry iron, no steam. And that should be plenty then to keep it down so that you can fuse it. So when you've finished that, you take your scissors and actually cut out the shape. So you cut around your line and you'll end up with your piece that's going to be fused onto your cushion top. So one of the easiest ways to get the backing paper off is to just take your scissors. The number of hours I've spent trying to get it away from this side and then starting up all the edge going funny. So you just pull off the backing paper which leaves the, the glue section. Then you're going to, on your cushion front, the best way to do it is to put lay down all your pieces to make sure that they're in the right order. So you'd have your little blossom here and then you'd put your green stems and your leaves so that you know you're putting them in the right place and the layout is right. But this is exactly the same as when we were doing the piece on the pattern fabric. Now we're just going to 
about 10 seconds leave that on and then that's fused to your cushion top so you put you now put your your stems in and your leaves your center and you would end up with your full cushion front then it comes to the sandwiching you start off with your organza over the top of your main fabric with your pattern that's already fused on it and then you've got your wadding and your cotton foil so once that's all sandwiched together you just tack all the way around the outside so it can be homeward bounders it doesn't matter it's not going to be seen it's going to be taken out all it's doing is holding all the layers together so the next thing is to decorate around the outside edge of the applique i personally like to use a silk thread for my hand stitching as you can see it's really really fine and it's so fine that i actually knot it onto the needle i've got a quilting needle but if you don't knot it 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 is so fine that it does tend to come out but once i've knotted it on then i'll run it through some beeswax that helps to stop it all bunching up and knotting. And you can see, if I put the needle through, that there's no trouble at all with it coming through with the knot. And it's going through nice and smoothly. So that's my stitch of choice around the outside. You can't see, even though this is a a different colour, I ran out of white, but this is a different colour because it's so fine, you can't actually see any of the stitching. If you don't want to hand sew, because I, I quite like the bubbly kind of look, but if you want to machine stitch, there's no reason why you can't. It gives a totally different look. But this has been machine stitch, you can see the stitch but that might be what you like. Or also, this has been hand stitched, but I haven't used the silk thread. I've actually used a coloured thread. I've used green around the stems and the leaves, pink around the flower and yellow around the centre. So you can see on the back, look, the different colours. So that's another look. You can actually see the stitches on this one, but not a great deal. Also, if you want to put some piping, this is, I didn't have any um, piping to put through. This, this is a little bit of um, bias binding that I had, if you wanted to put around the outside of your cushion. That's another way of finishing off and making it a little bit different. If you do decide on hand stitching around your applique, it's just a simple running stitch all the way around the outside edge. I'll show you on the back of this one because I've done this one in a coloured thread. And at the point where I change direction, I do a little back stitch because that holds the tension nicely all the way around the outside. So I would also do a back stitch at the point where the leaf leaves the stem and also at the top point of the leaf and it gives you a nice tension all the way around your your pattern. One thing that I would say is when you're assembling and you on your final stitching, make sure that you haven't got any pieces underneath your organza in your sandwich between your organza and your main piece because that would annoy me immensely every time I looked at the cushion. So you do have to be aware to make sure that you haven't got any pieces of thread or fabric in your sandwich between your top and your organza. From your main fabric with the kit, you cut out two pieces 45 by 30 centimetres. And these are your pieces for your envelope back. So along the one of the 45 centimetre line edges on both of the pieces, you need to make yourself 
a fold to neaten off the edge. And when I'm, when I'm trying to turn fabric, rather than burn my fingers, I use a piece of card. I've marked where these are going to be and it makes it so much easier just to turn and press along the piece of card and you get a nice sharp, sharp finish on your hem, whatever you're doing. Obviously you can't do it on a, a round piece of fabric, but then I'm going to best press and just finish that off so that we've got a nice edge to hem. And you'll do that on both pieces on just one of the 45 centimetre edges. I've stitched along the 45 centimetre edge on one side of each of the pieces. So we've got a nice tidy hem. And I've also trimmed the cushion front to a 45 centimetre square. This is the point where you can make sure that your design is actually central and you're going to trim off all the raggedy edges. So I've got my top and now I'm going to place my envelope back and I'm going to put it right side to right side. So I've got my cushion front up and my nice tidy edge that's going to go and lay right side to right side over the cushion front. Then the other one on the other side and we're going to I'll just pin this so that you can see you've got a nice overlap there we go you've got a nice overlap there for your envelope back cushion so now all I'm going to do is sew all the way around the outside edge about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half but I will make a point of at these points here where the fabric overlaps, because that's going to be a point that's pulled when you're putting in your cushion pad. I'm going to reinforce those pieces there. And also at the corners, when you reach to the point where you're nearly ready to turn, I leave my needle down and take two stitches on an angle before I start to turn and then start to go down the other side. And that way, by doing those two small stitches, you get a nice point. It seems to have because you would expect that if you had a good point. But the thing is, if you just do a right angle there, you're going to have a rounded corner because you can't push it through properly. But by doing the little diagonal stitches, that helps it turn through nicely. So I'll sew round there and be back. So I sewn all the way around the outside edge and I reinforced at the points where the cushion pad's going to pull this open. So now what I'm going to do is to just clip off the corners, quite close but not too close to your stitching, remembering that I've taken two stitches on an angle there. And then all we do is turn it inside out. Now, sometimes on envelope back cushions, I do put snaps or buttons. It depends really on the kind of cushion pad you're putting in. This is a feather one. And it doesn't pull the cushion pad out of shape. But sometimes if you put too large a cushion pad in, it can actually pull the cushion out of shape so that you need to pull the two centre pieces on the back together. But I'll, I'll turn this out and then I'll show you what I mean about taking those two, two stitches out on the corner, making a lovely square. Whereas if you were to go to the point, this little part here would be quite rounded. So it seems silly that you take an angle to get a nice square, but that's how you do it. So now we've got the 
completed cushion cover. But what I've got to do now is to remove all my homeward bounders. You can tell I'm a naval officer's daughter because it's a naval saying homeward bounders. Does anyone else use that saying? So there we go, that's all the tacking stitches out. All that's left to do is to just put in the cushion pad and I'll chain both of them together then. There we are, that's both of them finished. We've got the envelope back. As I said, you can, if you want to, add buttons at the back or snaps. I've used both in the past, but it's not absolutely necessary. The only things that I would say would be helpful with this project is a walking foot on your machine. Because you've got so many layers, you've got the organza, the main, your wadding and your voil, that's four layers, it's really helpful to be able to feed the top and the, uh, and the underside together as it will move. So a walking foot is helpful. So apart from that, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you will have a go. Nice, easy project if it's your first applique project. So all I can say now is keep calm and carry on sewing. Goodbye. So thank you very much to Alison and to her mum um, for filming that for us. And, and don't you agree, the finished result is absolutely stunning. So this one is the Hello Blossom. Remember, there's everything that you need in the kit apart from your actual cushion pad. So your applique work, um, your organza, and your um, the fabric to make the envelope back is all included. And, of course, you have your instructions there as well. And Alison, Sarah says, fabulous demo, beautiful designs. And I think I agree with her on that. Thank you very much. So we've got two designs for you. This one's Hello Blossom. Um, if you missed that, by the way, if you've just joined us and think, oh no, or when you get your kit home, that I've, I've missed the demo, um, all of our programmes are um, put onto YouTube. So by this afternoon, later on this afternoon, you should see the whole day's live shows there. Uh, it'll be in a three hour block, but just search by the day, and we're in the middle bit. <laughs> so you can watch back at any time you like. So when you get it home, you say, I've forgotten what to do. Um, if you're not too good at instructions, although these are really very clear instructions, then do take a look um, on YouTube and follow us back there. And leave a nice comment as well. And actually, while you're on uh, YouTube, if you subscribe, if, if you're quite new to YouTube and it says anything that to me says subscribe, you think, oh, how much is that going to cost? It doesn't cost anything at all, but you need to press the red subscribe button and then there'll be a little bell at the side of it. Press that as well, because then you're going to be alerted to any new videos that go on there. So you'll have an alert every day, um, but you'll know when the videos um, actually go onto the channel. So, um, 26 99 for everything that you need for the kit. Daisy's been your most favourite one at the moment for this one. So the duo day, really clever, isn't it? I just think it's, it's such a lovely technique. It's a really beautiful design. And I love that. I know Alison was saying that you can machine sew, but I like the look of the hand sewing as well. You can actually see the stitches there. And I just think it looks absolutely exquisite. Well done, Alison, for that one. So Alison, if you're watching, you probably are. It can start working on some more. We'll have more of those. <laughs> She's got some aprons coming up, actually. You may have noticed in the video. Um, we've had a message from Shelley. Hi, Shelley. She says, another great show, thank you. Can you tell me if there is some sort of guide booklet to tell what all of the stitches on a sewing machine are for? Um, her machine only goes through a, the basic one. I'm surprised at that because she's got a genome. They normally explain things really well in there. We don't have a guide book as such, but I'm sure if you have a look on YouTube, they'll, they'll cover most of the stitches on there as well. We try and go through as many as we can on the machines that we have when we bring them to you. If there's anything specific, like remember there's a particular stitch that you don't understand, we've got sewing surgery coming up a week on Monday. Um, it's like the 1st of June, 31st, 1st, but the 2nd of June, I know it's June, it's June a week on Sunday. Mm. So yeah, um, send your messages into um, Facebook, or your questions, and then we'll have a good old Q&A sesh at nine o'clock on the first Monday of the month. David doesn't sew or do any crafts, but he just likes watching the show. Hi, David. Hope you're enjoying it. Maybe we'll um, 
Maybe we'll, we'll persuade you, we'll get you hooked, get you doing a bit of sewing. Um, Pam's just finished her sister's birthday present. Oh, I hope, can I read this out? Does she know? Well, you put it on there, so probably. Um, it's a shower wrap, hair turban and a wash mitt. Why do I think when I had hair turbans, I think about Elizabeth Taylor and that really glamorous kind of 1950s era. Is that what your sister's going to look like? Mind you, Terry Towling. Um, but with a peach trim, that's really pretty. Oh, well done. We'll be ordering your tote bag book and the Liberty fabric today. Oh, well done. This is all on the Facebook page. If you want to leave a post, if you have a question, even if you don't sew, um, it'd be nice to hear from you this morning. Are we up to date there? Yep, I think so. Back again. Lovely. OK, um, we have some applique bits and bobs for you. I want to put it somewhere where you can still see it. I could take my book down, but I'm not. There we go. <laughs> so we have some tools and things that you may find useful. Oh, I've just come off the, the page as well. Posts, visitor posts, back again. Um, the applique mat is back in stock. So you look at this and you think, oh, is that a mat? Really? And actually, when you use this, I shall show you, it is incredibly useful. It's a Teflon mat, so it's heat resistant. So I shall show you that. And I shall show it you with this. And I shall show you with the glue. Oh, we've got one open. Oh, we've got one open, haven't we? I'll get, I'll get the bill for that now. Do that bit. So I can, that's hot now, I can iron on this. I wouldn't recommend that you're going to iron straight on top of your mahogany dining table, but I can iron on top of this without much of the heat coming through, but it's not melting, which is the important bit. Should we, should we do this just in case I do get into trouble? But because it's Teflon, it's not going to melt. Um, so it can help to protect your surfaces. Um, but the thing that I love about it, we're calling it an applique mat, but if I'm doing any kind of gluing, um, I've used a hot glue gun on this before now, and uh, the glue just peels away. And with my hot glue gun, I tend to put it down. It falls on its side because it won't go on its stand. And then I'll put it on a piece of paper to stop the glue going on the table on my cutting mat. And now I've just ended up with a decoupage glue gun. It's really interesting. I've got magazines from the 1960s decoupaged on it. Um, so it'll help to protect that. But the glue just simply peels away. So this is Gutterman glue. Might take a while to dry, so I might have to come back again. Might take a while to come out, because that's it. Um, but this is the glue that I would use to put bag frames in bags. It's really, really strong. And if that goes onto my cutting mat, it can actually spoil the blade of the mat. Another thing with your iron, if you're using Bondaweb or any kind of fusible adhesives like this, um, you, maybe you've got your applique piece and you've put your fabric on there, you've already cut your applique out without cutting through here and then you'll put it on your cutting table and you'll iron it down and then you'll get some of the edge of the glue sticking to your iron, out of your ironing mat. So, I mean, this is, it's sticking, which I want it to. But if I'd let that cool down a little bit, it'd just stick even more. But can you see I've got the glue actually sticking to the mat there? And if that was my ironing board cover, it just never comes off. Then that's going to transfer back onto your iron. Then it's going to be on the collars of your shirts. But here, look. Let me put something dark behind there. Look, just peels away. That would, uh, let me do this, I'm going to do it on a piece of fabric, because this is what would be, what would really happen, isn't it? 
So that's my ironing, my ironing board cover. Right, so I'll leave that to dry. This is my mat, my applique mat look, and that's just coming off like that. That's so satisfying. And it's literally just rubbing off. And here on my ironing board cover, I mean, you wouldn't with a pair of scissors, but that isn't going to go anywhere fast. That would be absolutely ruined. There's no way you're going to get that back off again. So if you are using any kind of adhesives like that, make sure you put your mat underneath it. Um, I don't know how much ironing board covers cost, maybe about £12, £15. For the sake of £6.99, you can save the life of it. Right, that's not quite dry, so we'll, that, that's the glue that I drizzled on there, so we'll come back to that shortly. And you can see through it, so if, you do, if you're using one of the mats like this and you're positioning your applique pieces and you need to see um, the measurements underneath it, then of course you can do as well. It's really, really useful. In fact, you could fold that over and sandwich in between the two pieces, so you're not going to get glue on your iron either. Jolly good idea. We'll come back to that one later on. We've got the prim irons back in stock. Come back to that later. I did put a big blob on there. We'll come back to that in a bit. Um, the mini iron, the thing I love about this one, it's a proper little iron and it's a steam iron. Um, so you've got a temperature control on there, you've got a steam blaster, you can put your water in the top up here, and it really, I think I've got any in there, no, nope. um, but we do, it does give a really nice blast of steam, um, so it's a great travel iron, um, it's really easy to hold, so it's ergonomic. It heats up really, really quickly, but it does, it does get really hot. It's not a toy iron, um, so it gets really hot. And But if you've only got a small pressing area, if you've only got a few seams that you need to press open, and you don't want to go and switch on your big steam generator iron like I have, and set up the ironing board, and walk all the way to the west wing every time you want to press a seam open, um, that's what happens at Winterbourne House. Um, then this is just really easy. Keep it right next to you when you're sewing with your ironing mat as well and just for those little little areas that you need to press open. But again, it does give a really good blast of steam as well. You'll find it really useful. Uh, and I'm surprised that this Prim Mini Iron doesn't have a, a Facebook fan page or its own Twitter account or something. It has so many fans. I think every time we bring it to you or when you've bought one and messages that you sent, oh, I love that little iron. So yeah, you're gonna fall in love with it as well. And it does have the temperature control control so that's they're really important when you turn that all the way down it switches off as well which is good because it doesn't have a timer on it so just remember turn it all the way down when the light goes off and then it's off um 39 pounds 99 your price there just come with a little drawstring bag as well which is quite nice if you're um, if you are traveling or for storing it away of course as well now remember you can order on the website on sewing street tv or you can go to the phone lines, which is about 100 001 433, and that's a UK based um, just down the road in Redditch. Oh, the bonder web that we saw earlier on. Uh, this is perfect. If you, if you are doing any kind of applique, perfect. Um, if you haven't seen this kind of thing before, it's adhesive on one side, that's the, the rougher side, and the other side feels like, um, um, oh, wax paper that kind of thing, grease-free paper is what I'm thinking of. So you will iron this onto the back of your applique piece, or if you iron this onto the back of your fabric, you can then draw on the back here. I haven't tried to see if you can print on it, I'm sure you can. Um, but you draw on the back, then cut your shapes out. Remember if you're doing anything like letters, or any shape for that matter, it's going to be in reverse. Um, to take it off again, just give a little bit of a scratch in the middle, peel away the paper backing, and you're left with a thin layer of, of adhesive. The reason I like this is because 
with bigger applique pieces, certainly, um, you'll tend to find that as you're sewing around, the fabric can shift a little bit. You can pin, you're going to be sewing around pins, that can be really fiddly. Um, or you can use your 505 sprays, but again, that can still lift a little bit and 505 spray will wash out. This won't, it's permanent. So if you're doing a raw edge applique but you don't want it to fray too much, then use this first of all and then sew over the top. If you're doing very, very fiddly, fine little pieces that you probably won't even be able to sew, then this again is ideal. And if you have a cutting machine that cuts fabric, um, so whether you've got a, a, a scan and cut, a brother scan and cut, or a, a Sizzix machine or anything like that, if it's got dies that will cut fabric, you will need some kind of medium on the back of your fabric as, to use as a carrier. You won't be able to cut straight through fabric with a cutting machine because the blade will catch on the threads. So you put this on the back and then all you need to do is cut out those really intricate shapes and then iron them straight onto your work. So it's really, really useful. Yeah, loads of it. There's five metres on here and it's 30 centimetres centimeters in that direction and it's only £23.99. Nice that it's on a big roll that one, it's almost like you know what, what you would buy if you were in the trade or that, that kind of huge size. Um, we do have a smaller packet if you just want to give it a go then that's that. Shan't open that, it's the same but smaller. So this is 17 and a half centimeters by just over a metre, by 1.2 metres in size. So exactly the same, just a different, a different form. And that's by Belizeline. Hi, Caroline. Caroline's in sewing heaven. I never thought a channel exclusively for sewing would ever exist. Plus you have my sewing idol, Debbie. Oh, go on. Oh, go on. Demos are amazing. I've subscribed on YouTube. Jolly good. I'm following on Facebook and a little bit giddy inside. <laughs> oh, welcome along, Caroline. We are quite new. We've only been going since uh, February. Uh, 14th of February actually, so Valentine's Day we were the first, first live show um, and we are live for three hours every morning so 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock so we're live through till 11 and then for two hours after that you're going to see repeated shows for now we will be live for five hours eventually I'm sure when we get our new studio um, and we are exclusively sewing. We don't do knitting, we don't do crocheting, we don't do paper crafts, it's all about the sewing. But that means we can bring you lots and lots of different genres. So there's a lot of quilting, there's a lot of dressmaking, we've got the homewares, we've got, oh, we've got lots, lots of different techniques for you. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're liking it. <laughs> Still a bit giddy. Um, quarter of the stock of our Daisy Duo has now sold out. Brand new for us today, this is Shadow Applique. Um, if you have just joined us, wait until later on this afternoon and take a look on our YouTube channel and you're going to see a full demonstration by designer um, Alison Marion. And I, I certainly have never seen this technique before and I think it is beautifully elegant. It's actually covered with a layer of, um, of Georgette which just gives it that, it, it's like a a, 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 a beautiful dusting, isn't it? Like a frosting. Really lovely sheen. So the whole kit is £26.99. All of your fabrics, so all of your applique pieces, and your organza, and enough to make the envelope back. All you need to provide is your cushion pad for £26.99. So that's the duo daisy. We've also got the um, a, a tallow blossom as well. So have a look on the website for more details. There you go. That was the one that was actually demoed. That's Hello Blossom. Again at £26.99. We have something rather special for you. This is the Lily of the Valley panel. Now we don't actually have the panel here because we weren't supposed to show you this. But we're doing it anyway because we sold out completely the first time we brought it this to you and we do have some more back in stock again. So basically you have a 12 inch square here and then on the other side of the panel you have all of these two and a half inch strips. All I've done with this bag is um, quilted in between each line so I haven't pieced those together. That is one actual strip. And another idea for you is... A cushion cover. <laughs> there you go. 
Um, so this is again using a 12 inch panel in the center. This is part of the panel. So I've just stitched through, there's H640 H on the back of this. And then I've used some of the strips from the back to make a mitered edge all the way around. And then I've just used a plain one. Um, so if you missed out last week when we sold out, we've got some more back in stock for you. Um, so it's this and then all of the strips coming off the side. I think it's 150 centimeters in width altogether. It's 100% cotton, uh, sorry, 140 in width. Um, and it's, really, it's, it's just a really lovely, elegant design um, and very, very versatile. So bag making, quilting, interior design, whatever you're making with it. Love to see your pictures when you do make them. So have a look on, uh, on the website on sewingstreet.com. And if you do want to have a look, this is what you're going to find. So the easiest way is to actually search in the search bar at the top there. DRU. And it comes up straight away. There you go. If you put Lily in there as well, that's another way of finding it. So it's not just the panel that you do get the little uh, label underneath it as well. There's a couple of those, but there are strips attached to it as well. You've got all of your two and a half inch strips attached to that. So it's not just that 12 inch square. You get all of the rest of it too. So maybe on another day. Maybe we'll show you properly. We just thought we'd give you a, a sneaky peek of what's popping up on the website, even though it's not in the show. Mm. Um, we, we do, we, well, we take a note of how many people search for things, and a lot of you have been searching for this. So we have, we have it right now, available for you for £9.99. I'd multi-order those. Um, certainly for making cushion covers, because you're not just going to have one random Lily of the Valley cushion cover. However, it is the flower of the month, so there will be 12 of them. Um, so if you wanted to collect them all and then in a year's, a year's time, it's going to go like that, isn't it? Um, in a year's time, you could make a big quilt out of it. But if you're making two matching, then I would go for two of those. Two, two the same, I think, would be rather nice. So I'm on Facebook, by the way. I'm just checking that you haven't um, sent any more messages because I don't want to miss you. We had yesterday a set of colouring pens and a panel. This was the early bird from yesterday. I wasn't meant to show you this. It's Sunday and it's bank holiday tomorrow, so no, nobody important is going to be taking any notice of what we're doing anyway. We can, we can do what we want. I can tell you my books on the website and everything, because nobody's going to know. So... <laughs> it, does, it, does, but it looks like part of the graphics, doesn't it? It's like, what's it got a picture on there for? Mini-me. <laughs> it's a colouring in panel. Oh, you, <laughs> you won't have bits coloured in. Vix, one of our other presenters, had a little bit of a play the other day. Um, but you will get all of your colouring pens, and these are permanent. Leave them to dry for 24 hours, and they are permanent. Um, so, colouring isn't colouring in so relaxing? You do know, it is why there was a. a a long time, actually, in book-wise, of colouring in books being the top of the charts for, for years, wasn't it? So colouring is just the new thing. Um, so if you've got some panels to colour in, get the kids to colour them in, you can colour them in, um, however you like. That could be maybe a pocket on an apron, you can make cushion covers out of them. And of course, you can do your own drawings with them. You just happen to get the panel that comes with the pens that you can colour in if you wish. Nice one to keep the kids busy though, isn't it? And that's a nice little momentum as well. Or just get them to draw. Um, oh, I found the other day, um, my, my youngest son, who's 25 now, um, when he left infant school, so how would he be, eight? I think he was eight when, because we moved house, at, anyway. Um, <laughs> we moved house at the same time and everything. Um, but all of his mates drew on a T-shirt um, and some of those friends he's, he's still friends with, even though we moved at the time, which is quite nice. Um, but the inks ran on it, and the, the little thing's only this big, and he's this big now. I don't know how that happened. I did say to him the other day, what did you do with my son? Because <laughs> my son was little. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, all, all the ink ran, which is, which is a real shame. Um, I'm still going to keep it, obviously, but... But if you're going to do something like that, if you want something to last a long time, and this, I think, is so much nicer, 
to have maybe a tea towel that the kids have drawn on or a pillowcase or a cushion rather than things that they're drawing on on paper that you stick to the fridge and then they end up in, in the bin at some point. Um, fabric lasts a lot longer than paper, doesn't it? Um, so little bags, even if you have... Um, like the bags for life that you can buy or the craft bags that you can get in some craft shops. It's nicer, I think, to, to draw your own or get the kids to draw their own. My, um, my eldest granddaughter, who's, she's five on Saturday, um, drew, me a, <laughs> drew me a picture of Grandma. You know, the sticks and the fingers that stick out like this. And I've got, I've got yellow hair, which is really nice. <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> That's what I look like in my spare time. Um, I've got lovely pictures of rainbows that she did as well. But they're all on, on paper. So at the moment, they're, they're blue tacked to the wall. Um, but it um, would have been so much nicer on fabric. That would make a nice birthday present. I'd have stuck as to what to get her. The only thing she's asked for is a mermaid tail. And my daughter's made her one of those. Oh, no, she won't be watching. No, 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 she won't be watching. Um, but, yeah, that could, that could be a, birth, a birthday present for her, and then she can make me a present with her present, couldn't she? But because you don't need to iron uh, or anything like that, you can personalise or write names on shoes and train. Oh, don't, don't let your kids loose around your shoe, your shoe cupboard, though, your shoe drobe. Um, but it's loads of fun as well, isn't it? And you get all of those colours, £18.98, including the panel as well. Oh, I've got lots of ideas now. My head's, head's kind of spinning. You can blend them as well when I had to play with them. Um, while the ink's still wet, you can make one run into another, so it gives a nice watercolour kind of finish as well. Oh, um, somebody made a point as well. can't remember a name. If you're searching for the Lily of the Valley panel... It's spelled wrong. Oh, dear. Annette, thank you for pointing that out. Apparently, Lily is spelled with two L's. When you're searching on the website, there should only be one L. Which might make it a little bit more difficult to find. <laughs> yeah, I think that will probably change, but maybe not till Tuesday when everyone's back at work again. Um, so... Uh, in fact, if you, probably, if you put in L-I-L, -L, you should get there from that, shouldn't you? But if you put in the second... If, if you put in L... -I it doesn't, apparently. You need to put L-I-L-L-Y. -L -L <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, look, it's wrong, on the, it's wrong on the screen as well, look. Anyway. D-R-U. If you put D-R-U, then it comes up. D-R-U-U-6-1 is the item number there. Thanks, Annette. See, this is, this is why it's nice to be live, and it's nice to have your messages. Because we'd have come to the end of the show, and then, and then the bosses upstairs would have said, you didn't sell any of those. And I don't know why, because it's beautiful. But it's because you can't find it, because somebody's made a spelling mistake. Glue's not dry yet. Let me show you a roundup tool. So as we're talking about um, applique... And this is, this is kind of an orange peel. So, a tool, oh, here we go, to make things round, basically. So, um, the nice thing with the, the, this is a creative grid. A couple of nice things about creative grids. They have um, frosty dots on, which you can just about see on your screen, and it's got a frosty outline as well. Those are grippy. So when you put this right side on your fabric, so this is on the bottom, it helps to stop your, um, your tool from slipping. You also have a QR code here. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet, download a QR reader, um, make sure it's free, and then you just hover your, the camera in your phone or your tablet over the top of here and it'll take you straight through to a YouTube demonstration of somebody actually using this and, and showing you how you can make all of the different shapes. Um, you can do a drunkard's path, you can do orange peel, you can do petals with this, and you can make full-size eight-inch circles really simply as well. I'll show you 
just briefly in just a second how that's going to work. Um, if you don't have a QR scanner, those aren't private YouTube um, videos, by the way. So if you go onto YouTube and just search for Creative Grids, you'll have um, tutorials for, for most, of the, um, most of the rulers and tools that they do. So for this one, so I've got glue on there, um, you, you're going to need some squares. And I'm going to go for an 8-inch square, I think, on this one. Again, it's, there is a little booklet included as well. So with all of the sizes that you're going to need, let's... <laughs> is that true? I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you something that I'm just hearing in my ear. Um, we have a box with all, all of the tools and everything that we, we normally bring you regularly. We've got boxes all around behind the camera that you can't see, and they're all storage. So there's a whole storage full of the Creative Grids rulers. Um, and apparently the, this um, Roundup tool and its instructions are in one of the boxes. And Joe, our director, went to get it out of the box and there was a spider in there. Which is why we don't have the instructions, because it was scary. That poor little spider was probably a lot more scared than you, Joe. Um, eight inch square, was it big? Oh, apparently it was this big. It had teeth and everything. <laughs> he feared for his life. So I think it's eight or five inch squares you use of this one. So let's do an, an eight. So you can do different sizes with it. Where's me eight? That's eight. Oh, they do need to be square. Um, I think that's eight. And then that one. OK, now if I'm going to cut a circle, this will now fit exactly in the, in the corner. So you've got two right angles here. So for a circle, you use the smaller one here. And you can cut around, move the whole thing over, cut it round, and again and again. If I'm going to do a drunkard's path, then I can take the centre piece here. This is the 8-inch one. Um, sorry, that, no, that's the 5-inch one. 5-inch or 4-inch, I've got an 8. 8-inch eight. Eight makes a circle. 5 inches will make the large drunken path. Four inches will make the smaller one. So all you're going to do then is to... Let's do the smaller one, so I've got some fabric left over. Line up the right angle angle here, and then you can use this to cut against as well. So I've got, I've got a blunt blade, haven't I? And this is my very own rotary cutter too. So there's my drunkard's path. And, of course, you can cut quite a few layers at the same time. Um, if I'm making a... Um, let's do a bigger one, it'll fit on there. An orange peel. Then again, cut around that side. Oh, dear. I think somebody swapped my rotary cutter with the one in the studio. <laughs> and then turn it around and go in the opposite direction. And you can do these in two sizes as well, but you can see how simple and easy that is to cut. And those join together like so. Um, and the petal, I shan't show you that now, but the petal is actually using one half of this, the whole lot, and then, because you can see it's not symmetrical, let me move that so you can see it better. How can you see it better? Let's see it on here. You can see this is not symmetrical. So two things you can do. You can use this side, turn it over, and that way, or for a nice fat petal, use this side, turn it over, and then go that way as well. You need an 8-inch square to do the larger sizes. Um, so it's all about accuracy. So you can create the different shapes of the drunkard path and your um, petal and your orange peel all from the one template. And that's only £24.99. When you're doing a plique like this, a, a, particularly with a, a design like the orange peel, where you're probably going to cover a whole, maybe a whole quilt or a whole piece of fabric with it, it's important, I think, to have 
accuracy and have every single piece cut exactly the same. So even if you have a template that you draw around, I don't think you get that same kind of accuracy that you would do if you went for your Creative Grids tool. Just really quickly. Oh, 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 just about dry. This, remember, is an incredibly strong glue. I just wanted to show you really quickly that that is lifting up off our mat. Look at that. It's not all dry, but it is lifting up. Which, again, if that was on fabric, there is no way that that would come off. And it's stain as well. So big ones don't come off, but that is your um, applique mat. Have a look on YouTube at previous if you, um, if you wonder what's so special about a sheet of Teflon. But that, it's a very special sheet of Teflon, I have to say. Um, right. Just give you a quick reminder of the Lily of the Valley panel. This is 140 centimetres wide. Um, I'm mixing up centimetres and inches, but it's 12 inches deep, which I think is 30 centimetres. Um, and on the other side, or at the end of the panel, you're getting two and a half inch strips like this. So it's the square panel and then a huge big strip of two and a half inch strips, which is deeper than this as well. I think there was a couple of rows left over because I made the handles out of that. Um, so this is the flower of the month. So flower of the month for May is the lily of the valley. So in a few weeks time, we're going to have the June flower of the month. So you could um, make up a collection um, or just go for them one at a time. So maybe making a huge quilt or a wool hanging. You could make a bag, you could make cushion covers out of them. I know we've spelt Lily of the Valley wrong, um, but that's what you need to search with two L's. <laughs> or you can just put DRW61 into the search bar on sewingstreet.com or might be easy to just use the phone 0800 001 4433 and just say I'd like the flower of the month panel, please. Lily of the Vanel, the Vanel. Coming up in the next hour, we've got um, an embroidery machine for you. It's just an embroidery machine. It's made for you by Elna, and we've got a, a video of Jane taking us through all of the main features of it as well. So we'll see you again in a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan, and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more. Together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6.
Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. And the next thing through surgery is actually a week on Monday. I think, I think it's the 2nd of June. So if you do have any questions, please can you send them over as soon as you can this week. Right now, then this hour, we're going to be bringing you the Elna um, 820 embroidery machine. This is a standalone embroidery machine with 100 stitches but you can add more to them. I'll talk you through that later on as well because you have opportunity, you have potential, so you can download um, from the internet and you can even buy um, digitising software so that you can create your own designs as well. I like the idea of having an embroidery machine that is standalone to my sewing machine because that means I don't have to stop sewing to then use my embroidery machine. And although it's a nice compact size, you do have two embroidery hoops, so you can create some actually rather large embroidery designs with this as well. But it doesn't have a huge carriage. You know, some of the, the, the bigger ones, the bigger machines, you have to have a huge space on your dining table because when the carriage moves around, it knocks off your teacups. Um, so it's not a, a huge area, it doesn't have a huge footprint that it takes up, but you can make some rather large designs with it, which are all in front of your right just here as well. I've not seen that on an embroidery machine before. You've got them in the um, in your booklet and you've got your parchment templates as well. Jane will take you through those in just a second. Um, but I like this idea of having everything right here so you've got an instant reference to the hundred designs that are on here. And with embroidery nowadays, I think about embroidery machines as being, oh, pretty florals and, and maybe um, some, some different fonts of alphabets and things like that. But there are so many different embroidery designs for the footballer, for the librarian for the children for the babies for the grown-ups and of course you've got your pretty floors on there as well so i really think there's something for absolutely everybody um it's l nuts so you've got a um a high spec to the machine and you've got a very reputable company they're based in the uk in stockport same company as Genomi, and you're going to get a two-year warranty from them whatever kind of machine you're even thinking of buying i would always recommend that you go for a big brand name because you get the support you get the help and you get the warranties with them as well um, now, if you want more details, have a look at the spec on our website on sewingstreet.com. Um, and if you want to order, you can order that way or indeed on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433. So this is £899 and it has a lot of stitches already in there, but it also has a lot of potential. When, you, when you're looking at embroidery machines, um, always have a think about where you want to go with it. So some embroidery machines that are more or less costly, shall we say, um, come with a very small hoop, which is fine. The one thing you're probably going to want to do as you progress, if you're, if you're new to um, machine embroidery, you're going to want to sew bigger designs. And this is the machine will, that will enable you to do that. And it's really simple to use. You've got your backlit LED screen here. It's all touch screen. It's got a cover that comes with it as well. It's got all of your full instructions in here, which again are really easy to follow through. And you've got your, oh, you've got some placement grids as well. Um, scissors, bobbins, everything that you need, everything that you'd expect to find with the machine are included. You've even got an accessory compartment, which means, and that comes off, you've also got a free arm. And these tend to be a little bit narrower than a sewing machine free arm. But that means that if you wanted to embroider in the round, so if you're putting monograms onto maybe a cuff or a, a sleeve or a leg, you can actually embroider on the round there as well. Use a smaller hoop for doing that. OK, so that is a brief overview of your machine. But as I said earlier, we do have a video um, from Jane from Elna who came in 
and uh, I made a video where she was talking a little bit more in depth about how to use the machine, how to choose your designs, how to edit your designs and eventually how to stitch them out. So let's take a look. Good morning everybody. I'm just going to quickly introduce myself. I'm sure most of you know who I am by now. My name's Jane Brogan. I actually work for Elna and Janome in the UK and today we've come along. Um, I'm lucky I live very close to the studio so I can just drive here in about five minutes and there's only Joe and myself in again so we're practicing all the safe um, social distancing and everything like that. So what we've got today we've got a fabulous little standalone embroidery machine for you. Um, so what I want to do first, when you get it out of the box, I want to show you what comes with it and then we'll talk through all the bits and pieces with it and then we'll go and do some embroidery. So first of all, machine out of the box, it's a standard, you don't have a foot pedal with it because it's embroidery only, we only use a stop start. We also get a really nice solid dust cover for it, so that comes in with it as well. Pop that away, down there. Um, we've got our embroidery scissors little embroidery scissors, we've got a little screwdriver, we have a spare spool pin if you want to put something in upright, screwdriver, the little cleaning brush, little felt that goes with this, a small spool cap as well as a large one which is on the machine, some spare needles and some bobbins. There's four here, there's one in the machine and again they are standard Elna Janome bobbins so if you've already got a Janome or an Elna then you can still use the same bobbins with it. We also get with this, let me just pop it across, we've got two hoops and they're a decent size that come with it. So you've got hoop A which is a smaller one and hoop B which is a larger one and again they come with the grid that just pops in and that is brilliant for placing your designs and working out where everything goes. So I'm going to pop that back in there and again when we work with this we also get some, it's like a parchment, so every single thing that's on the machine is actually in this little book and it's actual size. If I just pop one open so you can hopefully see. So that's a little cross stitch rose here. So you can see that and it's the actual size and it's got the crosshairs on which actually work with the little placement templates. So that's your start point on the centre. You can line everything up so it's really good for positioning all your embroideries. You can cut these up into separate pieces, pop them in a little folder, but absolutely everything that is in the machine is in here at actual size, so it makes it really easy to do lots of nice designs with it. There's actually 100 designs built into the machine as well. Pop that one over there. So some of the designs are on here. I'm going to start with that side first. So these are the built-in design menus as well. So there's a huge raft of designs on here. We've got floral, we've got cross stitch, we've got some little fishies, we've got some sewing notions, um, floral sprays, some garden ones, some cake, a cup of tea. So there's loads and loads of designs. Pop it over. And this side tend to be the larger ones. There's, it tells you on the top it's 45% to scale on these. So we've got butterflies are absolutely beautiful. We've got some large floral sprays and we've got some frames as well, which are great. So you can pop your little frame, then you can put another design in the centre of it. I have got some samples that we'll get out and have a look at later. So you've got a really nice book with it. So I'm going to pop that down here as well, so if you want to have a look at the book. Really nice instruction manual that takes you through setting up the machine. It's, everything's in here, how to use the machine, how to edit on it, changing the needles, winding the bobbins, absolutely everything. And again, at the back, you've got a little black and white thumbnails of all the different designs for a quick reference. We've also got three different fonts on here. So we've got Gothic, Script and Cheltenham. And again, we can do monograms, the two and three letter monograms on here. So it really is a handy little machine to do lots and lots of different embroideries with. And it's also, we have a little USB port on the side here. So you can use a USB stick with it so you can actually get designs from the internet and pop them on the machine. And when we open the lid, all the designs are in the top as well. So it's a really good quick reference for you if you're looking for a specific design. So I think now maybe it's time to actually do some embroidery. So now we're going to hoop our embroidery hoop, we'll put some felt in our embroidery hoop so we can start embroidering in a second. So again we've got the thumb screw on the bottom here which I'm going to undo and pop the centre piece out here, the inner, well the inner hoop, and pop that on there and again make sure that when you're hooping it's always on a firm flat surface, I may actually have to undo this one a little bit more, don't undo it too far or you will end up um, 
popping out of the hoop and then you'd have to put it all back together again which does take some time so again in pop that down a little bit there we go no nope, I'm gonna have to take this down a little bit more I've only, I've only got some small felts with me at the moment so I can't get to the office to get any more so we're having to make do a little bit there we go that's in so that's in I'm just going to tuck it all in and again finger tighten the little screw at the bottom try not to over tighten it by using the screwdriver because you will actually thread the screw eventually so now we're hooped up and we're ready to go Right, so now we're going to walk around the machine and have a look at all the different functions that it does. Now we've got the um, fabrics hooked up ready to go. So I'm going to switch the machine on. And then you see the screen here, so you can see everything comes up. And there's a little number in each corner, one, two, three, four. These are all the embroideries. It also tells me on the top here the hoop size that these embroideries fit in. So these fit in the smaller hoop. If I want to scroll through my embroideries, then I just go through this way. I can take it through and it just brings them up. And if you want to select an embroidery, then you literally just touch the screen. It's telling me what hoop size to use. And OK. It's going to move the arm to the right position to start. And then it's got my embroidery in the screen there. So again, you've got all the information on here. It's telling me it's going to take nine minutes to embroider. There's nine colours. The size is 26 by 46 millimetres. I can go into the machine and alter that to inches, which I will do in a minute. Send me the hoop size. You can also pop this so you can see which colours are going to embroider first. Take that off. And again, you can move through the colours as well. If you, There's nothing to stop you on these machines. If there's a part of the design you don't want, just skip through it. Don't sew it out. And we'll pop that back to the first one. There we go. And again, we've got a little cotton reel here. So if I press that, that's going to bring me up all the colours in the embroidery. And it's telling me on the top that I've got two pages. So the nine different colours. You can scroll back. When you've had a look, then you can just press the little arrow here and it will take you back to the screen that you were on. And again, once again, we have the ability to move within the actual hoop that's on the machine with the little jog keys here. So they can move through everything. We can also pop that onto there when you start sewing. So if for any reason you need to stop or anything like that happens, you can go through the stitch count on the bottom here. So it will jump through in tens and you can go back. So you can really get some precise positioning on there. We still have the function to trace out the design area where it's going to sit. The little one here that will just park the little arm on the machine again remember whenever you switch the machine off before you go away and leave it to make sure that that arm is parked back into the back of the machine so it's not going to get damaged then so we're going to go back now so the designs here so I'm back on this screen you can have a, you've got a little same machine here with a little embroidery I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera or not but if I touch that it brings up another screen. So if I've got embroidery designs in here, it's personal designs. So you can save your designs onto the machine again, or equally you can pop them onto the USB and then get them back off the USB stick. Pop that one back. Mode is a nice one. So that, again, you can personalize your settings in here. So if I go into settings, we can then personalize to what we want. So we can change the schemes. Screen contrast even. <laughs> uh, we can also have the lighting on it. Eco mode, 10 minutes. So if you've not used the machine for 10 minutes, it will go to sleep. Inches and millimetres. I always have mine on inches. And again, I can scroll through here. So key position adjustment. Again, it just recalibrates the screen. If you think oh, it's not quite um, working when I touch it, I don't feel it's in the right place. So it will just recalibrate. Speed setting here, 650 is the standard, but then I can go right down to 400 stitches a minute, or I can bring it up to 750 a minute. Tend to stick at the 650. Uh, if I was in a really dense pattern, I would slow it down. So the sewing light again, we can switch that off if we want. I'm back on again. The auto thread cutter is switched on, so the machine will actually cut the thread for you when it's finished sewing. So it saves you having to try and wrestle with it and pull it out and cut top threads and bottom threads. So it's a really nice feature. Again, you've got a thread selection here, um, just different ones. I tend to leave mine on the default setting on all my machines because I've got a huge range of different embroidery threads from different brands. You can't always get the white right shades in every colour. For, you know on one particular brand so it's worth just having a look around and just 
find the ones that you want as long as they're good quality that's the main thing so again we've got a built-in memory and you've got the usb here so what i want to do now i want to save my changes so i have to press register and that has saved my changes now so i'm now in inches so i want to do a little bit of editing on the screen so again i think let's pop through what should we have let's go on to here so again it's telling me the hoop size that's great so I actually want to edit now, so I'm going to press edit, and it's brought me onto the editing screen. I actually want to put this into the, into the hoop B, it's showing me hoop A, so I can touch the little hoop icon on the top, and I can select hoop B, and then press OK. So you can see now how my embroidery area has grown. So again, you can move this touch like that, or I tend to use this on here, so you can move it around quite easy with little jog keys. If I want to pop another design in, then I can go back and I can let's see what else we've got on here. We'll have a giraffe. No, it's another fish here. We'll pop another little fish in. So again, I've got another fish. I can move that one around. So you can do a lot of editing on the machine, on the screen itself. Equally, if I want to put some font in, let's just pop him over there a little bit. You've got your A to Z here. So that will bring up your font screen. So it's a slightly different screen to all the ones we've been using before. So again, you've got font here. We've got three different fonts on this machine. So you've got the Gothic, the Script and the Cheltenham. And we've also got the two and three letter different monograms on. So I'm going to leave it on Gothic. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to select that. You've got upper and lower case as well. So and you can pop the writing in vertically or horizontally. So let's what should we put in Be really original here fishies will do so that's i'm going to pop that in okay so again it's in the screen here so i can move it around if i want to i can resize still on here and again it's a 20 percent resizing so it's 20 percent larger 20 percent smaller because it doesn't actually alter the density of the stitches it doesn't take take stitches out or pop extra stitches in you can get separate software which will do that for you so if i'm quite happy with that at 100 percent and then i can okay and it will stay on there so i think now i'm going to pop a quick design on to embroider and then i'm going to i've got some samples with me to have a look at as well so we can have a look at those so i'm going to go on to here cancel i don't want that and i'm going to go back and select up here which is my embroidery designs and let's pop one a single color one See, these are all now in the smaller hoop so when I come on to these now, it's going to tell me now all the next ones now are into the hoop size B. So just trying to find a single colour one. Where was I looking at? I was going to take it off here. In fact, I might do number 83. So I need to go back. You can see me just scrolling through quite quickly on the arrows here. So that's 83. So it's hoop size B. It's giving me the size of the embroidery. And that was it. So it's a one colour embroidery, it's going to take one minute. So I'm going to pop the hoop on. I've already threaded the machine up. It threads up exactly the same as everything, all the other machines and the bobbin drops in exactly the same as well. So we're going to pop this under. You can also lift the presser foot higher if you want, just slide everything under. It's in the right position to start. I'm going to have to, it's very awkward to hoop up from this angle on these to actually attach the hoop to the, um, to the machine. There we go. And that's it. So it drops in and turns again. Same as the other machines. And we are literally now ready to sew. So I've got a thread that I'm holding here. So I'm going to pop the presser foot down. And we're now going to embroider. I'm going to do a few stitches. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to get my little scissors from over here. And just snip that long thread off. So it doesn't get tangled with everything. It's wise when you're doing this to make sure you've actually stitched away from where you start. Otherwise, the chances are you'll cut the wrong thread. And I'm speaking from experience here. Um, and then the machine is just going to sit there and quite happily embroider away now. It's going to take seven minutes to do this. So we can just leave it stitching.
Okay, so the embroidery is now finished. The machine actually will automatically cut the thread at the end for me to save pulling out yards of thread. Just go with. So I'm just going to pop the design off now and cut the jump threads. Just take those off. It takes seconds to do it. Pop that one in there. Pop this in here. And just pop those off and then do it. Okay, so I'm going to pop this down now and then we can have a look at some samples. Before we do that though, there is also, which I forgot to tell you earlier, there's a really handy accessory box for storing all your bobbins, needles and bits and pieces in on the front of the machine here. So some samples that I've brought with me, these are off the machine. So again, they've got the different fonts on and different designs. So they've all been done on here, so I've got these ones. And we've got some the larger font here with three little designs put on. We've also got on here some really nice cross stitch as well. So we've got the, the font on here, a little cross stitch pattern and then a standard one. And again, we've got the script font here with a little children, a little giraffe, a little crocodile, alligator, yes, a little train on there. Some of the florals. So it's just a really nice way to combine a lot of these designs together. And again, some more, some of the gardening ideas on here pop in if you've got somebody in, in the family who's into gardening we'll have to make something with that on and again some of the little sewing I've actually done some book covers with this little tape measure on so it looks really nice and the fish and again some of the little birds that are built in a little parrot a little duck cockerel and a little chicken there Over. But also, this is really nice. This it's a cross stitch rose, and it just looks. You can catch that. It just looks as if you're sitting there for hours cross stitching, which is my kind of cross stitch. I'm, I haven't got the patience to do it any other way. And this again is one of the larger designs that goes in hoop B. Some really nice daffodils on it. And again, something a little bit more abstract. And you can see the colours are absolutely beautiful on these. They really, really do. And then the last one I've got is one of the frames, so that's really pretty. You could, there's nothing to stop you doing that and cutting out the centre and actually mounting it onto a frame in some way. So you can pop a photo in the centre or you could put a little verse in the centre, anything like that. So just a quick selection of some of the samples off the machine for you. Oh, before I go, there is one thing I do want to show you, which is a really nice feature on here. On the alphabet, if I go in um, and I'll just pop something in there. So if I go into OK now, send me the hoop size. But what we can actually do, we can, we can actually ask the machine to where we want to start the alphabet. And we can also set it so that it will actually stop between each letter so we can change colours. So that's a really nice feature on these. Right, so that was just a very brief overview of the lovely Elnor 820 embroidery machine. Really great to have a standalone embroidery machine because it gives the option then you can be embroidering while you're still sewing as well on your standard machine. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching this and thank you for spending some time with me and I'll hopefully see you fairly soon. Bye, take care. And thank you, Jane, for filming that video for us. It's so simple to use this machine, isn't it? And I love the way, as you saw, that you have all of those 100 stitches right in front of you. I've not seen that on an embroidery machine before. Normally, you have to go back through the book, which, of course, you can do. So these are all of your designs and suggested colours, but, I mean, you can use any kind of colour of thread that you like. You don't have to... You know, a machine doesn't have a sensor that says, no, I'm not using red there. Nope, I'm not going to sew that one. Beep. Um, so this gives you an idea of, of all of the different designs as they're stitched out. But as Jane said, what I love about the parchment is that you have actual size. So if you've got a specific area that you want to fill, maybe this one could be a, a flap on a bag and you want to position it exactly by using a combination of the, um, the trace and you've got the grid over the top there, which sits inside your embroidery hoop so that you can measure exactly where that's going to go. This is really useful as well if you wanted to join designs together. So the machine won't automatically do that. You'll need to place each of these individually, but at least when you've got the grid in the centre, you can line that up, you know, the gap that's going to be left. So if I'm making a, a big scoop design, like a scallop design that's going around something like a tablecloth or the edge of a pair of curtains or even the hem of a skirt, then you can line up the designs perfectly so you know that they're going to match up. I think that is such a lovely idea. Now you've got 100 designs on here 
If I just turn the machine around to the side, you'll see that you've got a USB port here and you've got an SD card um, slide. So you can buy um, designs on cards. Have a look on the Janome Elna website um, or you can use your own if you have them. But because you've got a USB port, there's two reasons you can use this. One is that you can store the designs that you've come up with. So if you've edited your designs together, as you saw with Jane, so you've got your favourite flower, you've got a name underneath there, you know you're going to want to stitch that design out at a later date, um, you can store that on your USB stick, but you can also download from the internet, you can either buy or you can download free on some sites um, your own um, unique designs. So although there's a hundred on here, there are thousands available on the internet. And have a look at the different sites, because they're, they're quite affordable to buy. Um, a lot of them are in the States, so you're probably looking at five, six, seven dollars per design. But some of them, if you register for a newsletter or updates, you'll get so many free designs as well, so that's worth having a look at. And if you wanted to, oh, oh and by the way, when you're looking through all of the designs, they come in different formats. Uh, with Elner and Genome machines, you'll need a JEF format. Um, which you normally get a choice anyway. You'll go onto these websites and they'll say, do you want a PES, do you want a, a JEF? You've got all of these different options, but it's JEF that you're going to need for these. Um, so you can just download those and pop them into the machine. Do bear in mind your hoop size um, when you're buying any designs. So your hoop sizes are going to be, um, I think Jane said what they are, but just make sure that you're not going for anything that's too big that isn't actually going to fit into the hoop. Um, so that's what the USB stick's for. So although you've got 100, you've got endless amounts of opportunity. Also, if you have a look on the Elmner website and go, you, you don't sell anything on there, they, they recommend people. Um, but if you go onto the Expressive 820 embroidery machine, it'll also give you um, a list of all of the software that's appropriate for it as well. So you, you can actually buy digitising software. So if you've got photographs that you wanted to digitise or you've come up with your own design, maybe it's a company logo, um, then of course you can do that. Um, you can do that as well. So it's not just a basic sewing machine. It's an easy to use simple sewing machine, but there is huge potential with it. So I'm just going to get, get something going here. Um, so this is the, the home screen. Um, when you first switch the machine on, this is what it's going to look like. And as Jane showed you, if you just scroll through the pages, I'm going to choose something reasonably simple, but with a few colours on. I think this one's got four colours on. So it's nice to have the reference on the board at the top as well, because on the black and white LED display, you can't necessarily see too much detail on there. So let's go on again. I'm going to go for number 69, because that looks quite nice and simple. So the hoop size is the 5x4.3. So I've already put my, um, my fabric in the hoop. What I think is unusual as well with this machine is the fact that it hasn't got a carriage. The hoop slips directly onto, over you go, onto a little key thing here. So it's just like a bayonet. And that just goes in there and twists around until it's locked in. So again, you don't have this huge carriage or, or nothing to, to slide on and off. It just clips in the back. So it's, it's really, really simple. So I know I've got the hoop in. Thank you very much. So there we go. And now it'll manoeuvre into position. So I'm not going to edit or anything like that because you've already seen that with Joe. Actually, well, I'll make it a little bit smaller because hopefully that's going to make it quicker as well. So if I go into size, I can decrease by so many percent there. And in fact, when you get to the optimum, you can hear that beeping. That means I'm not going to go any smaller than that, for goodness sake, stop pressing minus, it's not going to work, is what that translates as. You can switch that off if you don't want the beeping. So let's go to OK. <laughs> um, I can check how many colours I need on here. Um, where's my bobbin? Let's press OK. Yeah, I've done that. Um, so there we go. So there's the size. I've got four colours. They're all together. The automatic thread snipper is switched on on this machine. You can choose not to have that if you don't want it to cut the thread. So this is actually four colour blues, but again, you can put whatever you like in there. Just to mention as well, if, you, if your thread breaks halfway through a design, go onto the jog and then you can go backwards and forwards a few stitches. So if your thread breaks, the machine will stop 
but it may run a couple of stitches without any thread in it. Um, so in this case, you can go back. You're not going to spoil the design. And if you run out of bobbin thread, so that's the thread at the bottom, um, you can actually take the hoop out, refill the bobbin thread, put the hoop back on again, jog it back a few stitches, and then just carry on. There'd be nothing worse, I think, if you're going to go for a big design like this and get in halfway through, and then you've got to start all over again. Um, OK. Let's press start and see what happens. I lower the presser foot would be useful, wouldn't it? So we'll do a few stitches and oh no need to do that because the thread was cut with the um, uh, the thread snippers previously then um, I don't need to take the thread away I would normally as you saw with Jane just take a few of the make a few stitches and then cut the the length of the thread so we'll leave that jogging along for a few seconds but I wanted to show you some of the different designs. So I think you just walk away from it. No foot pedal or anything with it because it's just embroidery. But look at the designs. Jane, if you stitch these out, it must have taken you a week. They are amazing. But what I love is texture. Look at the middle of this. So you've got a satin stitch just going across. But this is almost like a waffle stitch or a honeycomb stitch. So you get a really lovely contrast of texture. And that's all from one machine. Now use an embroidery thread for these designs because as you can see, you've got the thread going over and over and over in the same spot um, for quite a few stitches. So if you've got a polyester or a rayon thread, then you know that um, you've got the right thread for the job. And it also gives a nice little sheen to it as well. So they, they kind of catch the light, which adds to that three dimensional kind of look. Oh, somebody's missed a bit in the petal look. Um, but again, just love all of the different contrasts of different types of, uh, of stitches there. It really does give such a, a lovely finish, doesn't it? So let's take a look. I've got the alphabet on here as well, remember. Shall I just put another colour in here? So I've stopped sewing for a second because I need to change my thread. So it's actually telling me to lift the foot up. So we'll take this one out. It's snipped the thread because it's finished the blue. And let's pop another one on. So it'll thread up. Need a smaller spool holder for this one. Threads up just in the same way as the same machine. You do have your instructions. There are videos on YouTube as well. Not a lot, to be honest. Um, but if you have a look back on our YouTube channel, I think Jane's demonstration is a lot better than any of the ones on the website, personally. You have a needle threader as well, just like you would do with a sewing machine. So let's take you around there. I've got the sticker off the end of the, the thread stuck to my thumb. So that comes there. Oh, that's just shredded a little bit. Um, Thread-wise, you can use different types of thread with an embroidery machine. The rayons and polyesters work best because they're really strong thread. You don't want the snapping. You can use things like a metallic thread. Make sure you use a metallic needle as well. They have slightly larger eyes to the needle. And slow down your stitches. Why are you shredding? Because you'll have... Metallic, metallic thread is basically a metal through the centre with either polyester or rayon wrapped around the outside. Um, so metals get hot. And you've seen how quickly this sews. It'll go up to 750 stitches a minute. And that hot thread can snap. So slow down your speed by going into settings. Maybe slow it down to 450 if you're using metallic thread. And that's one of the reasons as well why you need um, the right needle for the job because it will allow the metallic thread to flow through a bit quicker. So I'm just going to stop there and cut off the end of the thread. And we'll leave you to go. Well, we have a look at some more of the designs. So again, you can piece things together. So these are all individual designs that Jane's actually sewn together. But look at the tone, look at the shading. When you have... What have you done there? Was that it? Have you only stitched that much? Have you broke your thread? I'm talking to the machine now. Can I carry on? It's 
seems OK. Carry on as normal, fine. Um, when you're embroidering, this thread is like paint. So it's wonderful to have a palette of different colours, so you can create all of these different shades. And remember, all of the shades and your colours are listed. You don't have to stick to a particular brand of thread if you don't want to. Look at the stitching around the outside of here. And, and again, the shading, all of those different colours of green, that really gives a three-dimensional look to the watering can. And even the heart, and the, the decoration on it, the water in the top. Isn't that amazing? And then on the little plant pot there, it almost looks like um, a basket weave, doesn't it? So detailed. And you can literally walk away and, and just let the machine do the job. Oh, these are pretty. Let me show you. Let me show you. Oh, I'll show you that one. Um, cross stitch. This cross stitching actually looks like it's been hand cross stitched. Isn't that so pretty? That is so amazing. And again, so detailed. The machine's asking me to change colour. One more time, OK? Only because, only because you asked nicely. Um, let's, go for, let's go for a tealy colour. I know it said all blues. I'm not using embroidery scissors to snip that plastic at all. Wasn't me, wasn't me. Those little scissors are included, by the way. Yep, she come. And you go in. So what are you going to embroider? It can be something as small as a handkerchief, as festive as Christmas stockings. Maybe, have we got Christmas on here? No, but you could download some, couldn't you? Um, it could be T-shirts. Oh, just to mention as well, always, always, use stabiliser on the back of your fabric. We do have a pack in the show um, of different weights of stabilisers and different types of stabilisers. For the most part, that's entirely up to you. I like a tearaway stabiliser when I'm embroidering. So you simply sew over the top. Come on through. Put the foot up, Deborah. Um, sew over the top of it and then tear away the paper afterwards. Um, you could use a water soluble if you don't mind soaking your work to take that away. You could leave, you could have a sew in stabiliser. So I'm shredding this thread like mad. So the choice is yours. If you go for the stabiliser pack that we have, then you get like a sample of all of the different types of stabiliser. So you can try them out yourself and see which one you get on with best. Sorry, do bear with me. So just like a normal sewing machine, no, nothing special to see here. There we go. Foot down, press start. And then stop. Apparently in France it's traditional at a wedding to have an embroidered handkerchief. Well, you can monogram this. You've got the letters on there, remember? So I've had a look at cross-stitch. That was cross-stitch. The frames are lovely as well. Um, so you could actually use the thread. That's, oh, that's um, great vines look. Um, so you could put letters and monograms on the inside or maybe even um, another design inside there. Remember, you can edit these all together on your, um, on your software. I'm not changing again. Look, I'm sorry, but you're not. Nope, not doing it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And... Carry on. Taking charge then. But we've got butterfly designs, a couple of those. In fact, there's, there's so, so many different designs here. Let me just, I know some are upside down, but have just look at that one. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, and that, and oh, the strawberries. So pretty, more frames. Love the floral frame as well. Oh, that's delicate. And do you know what I love? I love white embroidery on white. Uh, or ivory on ivory, the, the kind of thing that you see on, on wedding dresses. Absolutely gorgeous. Imagine that, just a really simple design, um, but on white a white shiny thread on white dull fabric would look amazing. Maybe it's going to be um, a wedding gift, are you looking at um, bed linens maybe, pillowcases and the likes. You can put your letters on there, you can monogram. What about a set of matching towels? 
a his and hers or a hers and hers or a his and his or a theirs. Just covering all possibilities there, you know, not to be PC. Um, more frames there. And then look, upside down pieces too. You get the idea. So many different designs. Now, I mentioned earlier on you're going to need stabilizer, particularly if you're sewing over a stretch fabric like Jersey. Yes, you can. Um, but put a stabilizer on the back. Even on heavier weights of fabric, I think I'd still put a stabilizer on the back. Um, you can, by the way, embroider. Oh, no, you carry on. I'm not, I'm not changing you. Just carry on. Thank you. Honestly. Um, you can embroider on things like the PEU, but use something that doesn't have too many stitches because you're going to make holes in it otherwise. Um, oh, here you go, look. It's quiet as well, isn't it? You're not making very much noise. Are we done? Oh, no, we're going to carry on. It's asking me to change the colour of the thread. I'm just carrying on there. Um, so this is a really nice idea. I shan't take them all out because we're running out of time. Um, but it's a starter set to stabilisers. And you're getting all of these different stabilisers included. So we've got cotton soft, cotton soft black, cotton stable. But the nice thing is there's a booklet in here which explains what each one of these different stabilisers is for, what job they have, where you're going to use them. So there's four of the tearaways, you've got four of the washaways, and then four of the cutaways included in the whole pack. And that's, that's them, look. That's one of the washaway ones. So I don't think there's any of the lace designs on this embroidery machine. But some designs that you can download, you can make three-dimensional pieces with them by using the wash-away stabiliser. Um, if you, so it's, you can make bowls and baskets, and I've seen little prams and push chairs and Christmas decorations and all kinds of things made out of them. They are beautiful. If you, if you dampen the um, stabiliser but don't use a detergent, some of the, the stabiliser actually stays in the threads and it makes it quite solid. So you could make a little bowl and things like that. Um, out of your embroidery. You need special stitches on there, special designs though. Are you done? No, carry on then. Um, Mega. And if you use a detergent to wash away the stabiliser, it will wash away completely. So that's more for things like lace. So again, not on the machine, but you can download them. You could actually make your own lace to go around things like tablecloths or dresses or anything like that. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do. Oh, the wash away as well is a good one to put on the top of things like toweling or fleeces. Um, and then either wash that away, or you can use a tear away, actually, for those as well. But if you've got a, a fabric with a pile on them, are you done? We're finished. I did use the same colour thread for a lot of these. I just wanted to just wanted to show you what we've been doing. And I did reduce the size of this. So we have a complete little design. I did shrink it down. Although you've got the scissors on there, you will have jump stitches as it goes from one side to another. Um, so you've got your thread snipper on the machine, but you're also getting a little pair of scissors included, and these are curved. So that means that you can get really close to the threads, but without cutting through. So a normal pair of scissors, you'd cut this way. But little embroidery snips like this are designed to get right into these tiny little areas. So that's what, what those are for, and those are included as well. Isn't that pretty? I love doing this, you know, just the, the picking away the bits. It's important as well to embroider in the right order because otherwise you're going to find some of these jump stitches are sewn over. So just a, a little design. So, and when you, when you follow the pattern like this, all of these jump threads are exposed so you can wait right till the end to cut through them. So you're not going to find that they're stitched over the top and spoiling your design. That's one of the, um, the features of using a, a digital embroidery machine like this. Pretty, isn't it? But that, that's only tiny. I've only used uh, three colours on there. It should have been four colours, so it should have been a little bit more interesting. But again, you choose any kind of colours that you like. That wasn't bad going for a quick demonstration, was it? But really, really simple to use. That's what I like about it. Remember, you've got your two-month, two-month, two-year warranty uh, from Elna. And you've got the two sizes of hoops as well. So a lot of the time when you buy embroidery machines, they come with a small one and the big one's an extra. But you're getting the both included there. But you've got opportunity, you've got potential, you've got 100 stitches already on the machine. And then, of course, you can download more as well. So you've got a great opportunity. 
So you'll need that, you'll need this. If you're quilting, you maybe want some quilt labels as well. Oh, I'm glad we got both of these because we sold out last time I was here. Let's lose all those bits. So this one is the, the pinky colours. Uh, Pink Hearts, this one's called. And there are large labels, there are smaller labels, there are blank labels, there are labels that just ha say handmade, there are labels that say handmade with love, and uh, made with love, and pictures of sewing machines as well. So although we're calling them quilt labels, I think these are for anything that you're going to make. If I was making a bag and giving it away or selling it, I'll put a little label in there, I think, just to say that it's a Debbie Shaw design. And of course you can use your, um, uh, yesterday's early bird pens on here as well so you can have some nice colours that you can write on with permanent ink as well. So it's £7.99 and pence. that's the pinks. You've also got the blues. So that's blue hues. And we have a couple more on the website as well and of course have a look on the website for everything we have for you on the show today. Um, if you need more details or more information about anything, or take a look at the things that we didn't get around to showing you on there as well. Um, and if you, um, if you take a look, or in fact, if you put in the search bar, Debbie Shaw, you might have a little bit of an exclusive as to what's coming up tomorrow, which is the launch of my next book. It was kind, kind of launched already, isn't it? Um, so, Sewing Room Secrets Quilting. This is coming up at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So that is the official launch. It's exclusive to Sewing Street for two weeks. So if you've pre-ordered from anywhere, those books are not going to be released until the 8th of June. Um, and it, it will say so on said websites where you can pre-order. But if you order now, uh, or tomorrow morning, um, at 8 o'clock, you're going to receive a signed book, which you're not going to get from the big sites. In fact, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, but you will get right here. So this is a beginner's book for quilting. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to do lots and lots of patchwork because I think they're different things. Although there is patchwork in here because the two go together so well. So I'm going to take you through the kind of things that you need tool-wise. What is patchwork? What is quilting? And all the way through to different quilting techniques like using templates, um, what kind of marking tools, what stitch in the ditch, what is wadding, what is a, a quilt sandwich. Um, what's echo quilting? That's you know the, just explaining all the different quilting techniques. This is a quilt as you go technique. So there's two of them in there. And then when you've learnt all of these different techniques, there are ten projects for you to make as well. Again, there is a quilt. It's a very simple one. It's about the different techniques that you're going to use. So that's trapunto. Um, we've got the table runner. That's using a um, a template and all the way through to a little bit of Bargello, English paper piecing. So, but that's a big fat tease as to what's coming up at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So I'm very excited about that. I have lots of comments about that already, so thank you. If you're a really experienced quilter, I don't think you're going to learn very much. But if you are a beginner, if some of the, you know when jargon just, it's demystifying the jargon. Um, there's a lot of terms that that so is used that people just don't understand and it can sound a little bit elitist. So I'll try and keep it really simple. Um, oh, I'll tell you what we had earlier on this morning. We've only got two of these left in stock. There's five and a half metres and um, one metre of that is free. So it's £74.99 for the whole bundle, but only two left. We did have a teal option that has now completely sold out. We won't be able to bring you this bundle, or oh, £74.90, sorry, I was charging you 9p more. Um, <laughs> what am I going to do with that 9p? Um, we won't be able to do this again. So if you've seen it before and you thought, well, I really love it, I'll wait till next week. I wouldn't because I don't think it's going to last much longer. Remember, the previous bundle has now sold out completely. So there's half a metre by 112 centimetres of all of these pieces for £74.90, all Liberty Fabrics, all beautiful, all coordinating. So this is the pink 
make a, make a bundle. I think particularly if you are a quilter, even if you don't have anything in mind at the moment, you know that when you go to your stash you're going to be diving into something that is really beautiful quality and lovely prints and a bit of a rarity because when these have gone that is going to be it. So you can order on the phone lines 0800 001 4433 if that's easier for you or you can go to our website sewingstreet.com and have a perusal of everything that we have for you. Um, okay, I'm going to see you again tomorrow. So, oh, stay with us for the next couple of hours because we've still got repeats of another couple of showing, showing, showing sews coming up. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. And thank you for all. Oh, Dawn, 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 I didn't mention your, um, your photo that you put on there of the, um, of the lily panel that she made for new baby Lily May, which is beautiful. And oh, Leslie says you give such fantastic advice. Thank, oh, thank you. I have an embroidery machine. Nothing as good as the one you're demoing, but good for doing all the quilt labels. I'm using good quality metallic thread, but it always breaks. I thought it was the machine or me, but you've just explained that it's the speed. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's helping to keep Sewing Street on our screens in this difficult time. We really appreciate it. Just stay well, everyone. Um, thank you, Leslie, and, and the same to you and yours as well. Um, OK, we're just about done here live now. So again, do join me at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning for three more hours of fabulous sewing and did I mention I'm launching my new book tomorrow? I'll see you then. <laughs>